Well, I mean, Midland League being from Permian, I mean, it's the biggest rivalry in the nation. There's no other game like it. When it's a big rivalry like this, when you're beating each other, you never want to be the team that lets that down. Uh, I just feel like because they're the powerhouse school of their city and we're kind of the powerhouse of our city in Midland, and then it's just 15 miles in between us. So when we get to we saved the best for last. How about the biggest rivalry that we've seen all season? Odessa Permian and Midland Lee. We are in West Texas for our final edition this season of Friday Night Stripes presented by Adidas. Courtney Lyle alongside former Super Bowl champ A.J. Hawk. Scooter Magruder on the field one last time. And this is a huge game, a district championship on the line. This rivalry is so big, they made a movie about it, Friday Night Lights. Well, now we got it on Friday Night Stripes. Yeah, a TV show too, Courtney. Yeah. I mean, everyone can think of Permian. and they remember where they were when they watched you that movie, that TV show. It's a, it's a big thing around here. Permian is undefeated in district play. They are 4-0. They're in the white jerseys tonight. Lee is wearing the maroon jerseys, and Permian with a quick first down. Our players to watch... We'll start with the Permian Panthers. And we're talking about Matt Jones. He's a defensive end. He's going to Baylor. He already has nine sacks this season. But then you'll want to watch for number 27, Ed Williams, over 1,300 rushing yards. He's been the featured back since he was a sophomore, and now he's really comfortable in his senior season. Odessa Permian runs the triple option, so you're going to see a lot of movement, a lot of things happening. But let's go back to Ed Williams and let him introduce himself. Hey, what's up, guys? Ed, Ed Williams, running back for Permian. We're going to go out there and get the dough tomorrow. Y'all see the signs? Y'all already know we're going to win that district title. Make sure y'all follow me, Ed underscore Will 20. All right. There he is, Ed Williams. 27 in white. He has 232 carries this season. They use him a lot. Peyton Powell is the quarterback and a quick handoff will be short the first down. It'll be third down now at about midfield for Permian. Yeah, expect a lot of touches for number 27, Ed Williams. I know he, he gained some muscle this past offseason, Coach said. Whether you're getting the ball or not in this triple ap- action, triple option veer offense you're gonna get hit every single play whether they're handing you the ball or not i think that's helped him and he's been able to be very durable and run downhill and let's see what they do here at the first third about five yards early in the game Ball on the 48 powell will pull it and keep it he's got the first down taken down inside the 45 Powell will want to keep it Peyton Powell is just so tough to stop. You watch here, that same, he pulls the read early and he follows big Ed Williams up the hole. He's such an athlete. I mean, he's committed to Texas right now. They don't know if he's going to play DB, wide out, quarterback. I think they're going to give him a shot at everything because this guy's just so dynamic. And it's great to see him back on the field, too. He missed last week's game against Friendship with an injury, did not play. They used their backup, Christian Rodriguez. No, that hit the ground first. That's incomplete. But it's just, it's impressive to me to watch Peyton Powell work in this offense because he transferred in January from a totally different offense, not the triple option. It's night and day what he was used to running. I mean, he ran a spread type offense where they do not have to make these reads on every single play. It does simplify the passing game a bit for him, but there's a lot going on. Trying to throw. Oh, man, that was so close. Almost a pick. These Lee fans sure wanted it. (laughs) They are getting antsy. Has two dropped interceptions from this Lee defense early on in this game, forcing a third and long. Anthony Gonzalez coming back on that play, trying to make the pick. Peyton Powell just throwing off his back foot there behind his intended receiver. That's going to be uh, that's going to get you in trouble when you try to throw off your back foot. You can't step into your throw. The 
the D line for Lee was was getting in there and breathing down his neck. Third and ten. It was starting to get loud, and Permian's got to call a timeout. This Lee crowd was making some noise. They're already into it. They know how big of rivalry this is. So this Permian team facing a very big third and ten situation, trying to keep this opening drive going in a really big rivalry game. Let's get some more on the Panthers. Permian as a team, I mean, our tradition is is winning and that's a big part here uh, all throughout the 80s the 90s I mean we're winning state champions back to back and uh, that's the tradition here the town kind of revolves around Friday nights I mean everyone's looking forward to the Friday night game everyone's asking you how it's going and it's just football is life around here big target on your back playing for Permian I mean everybody wants to beat you going into any game you're not gonna have nobody on your side everybody against you and then we just like shutting the crowd up and shutting the Oh, and they jumped. It's going to be on Permian. That's going to make it third and 15. Panthers are moving back. That's the right tackle. Big Landon Peterson with the false start. They're going to want to run his direction a lot tonight. This guy is big. He's long. He's athletic. And he's still yet to really even grow in to his frame. Third and 15 from the 48 of Lee. Three wideouts for Peyton Powell. He's looking to throw, running out of time, gets it off. And it is caught by Justin Hammond. Are you kidding? How did he get that? That's what Peyton Powell can do to you. You see, he looks like he's dead in the water, like there is no, nowhere to go with this ball. He gives a little pump fake. Heyman gets, turns around, gets back up the field. Watch this over the shoulder, back shoulder throw by Powell. Hammond with the body control to come down with it, too. He had Anthony Gonzalez right there. It's a 24-yard pickup. First and 10. And they go back to the ground game, picks up about five. That's Ed Williams. Courtney, that third that third and 15 conversion just kind of sucked the life out of the stadium right now. And the Lee fans and the, the sideline, I mean, that could have been huge. Come out, get a big stop, try to force Permian in, into punting the ball. And now they're on their nine-yard line going in when you thought you had them dead to rights. Second and five from the nine. Permian on its opening drive. And Powell keeps it. Bounces around the outside looking for some room on the edge. That's going to bring up third down. Courtney, this play was made. Look at the right side of your screen, number 19, Anthony Gonzalez. He, he contains this to where Powell has to bounce outside. If Gonzalez would have peeked inside there and let Powell get the corner, he would have scored. Gonzalez stays home. He strings it out and sends it back to the Calvary coming to chase him down and forcing another third down here. Third and three. Ball's on the seven for Permian. Quick handoff to Ed Williams. They've got the first down. He'll be short of the goal line. They just have a lot of different ways to get to that triple option. You saw the reverse pivot out there by Peyton Powell. Showing some nice footwork. Just to give the defense another thing to look at. Ed Williams has 19 touchdowns this season. Will they hand it off here and make it 20? They do give it to him. He falls forward. Waiting for the signal. Short. Just short.
second and goal. Just a yard to go for Permian. They try him again. There he is. Ed Williams. Touchdown number 20 this season. And Permian is able to punch it in on their first drive. This is a really tough offense to prepare for if you're Midland League. It's brutal. There's so many moving parts and so many responsibilities that if one of the 11 defenders peeks inside or steps in the wrong gap, it's going to be a, a long gainer. And, and it's just something that these guys are used to it, though. They played against each other. They played other teams that run this style of offense. Their own team runs a similar style of offense. But still, all 11 have to be on the same page to consistently stop an offense like this. And most teams that run this veer triple option style offense, they don't have athletes like Peyton Powell at the quarterback position. He's a special kind of athlete, and he can throw the ball down the field as well. So there's just a lot to worry about trying to defend this Permian offense. I mean, what you want to do, Courtney, is get him into third and long and hopefully force them to turn him one-dimensional and make him throw the ball down the field now. Justin Hammond went up and got that back shoulder ball on third and 15. That Apparently they can do that too. Negated that. So that's why this Permian team has, has been so successful this year. And if Lee can find a way to continue to, to force him into third downs, though, eventually I think this defense can get off the field. But Permian, that's just that's what they do. They're going to try to grind you down throughout the game. We knew Peyton Powell had somewhat of an arm. He's coming, transferred in, as we mentioned, in January from Midland Christian. And as you said, AJ, they were a spread team. Now we will get to see for the first time Lee take over here. They'll fake the reverse. And goes spinning past the 30. That was Bruce Franco for Lee. Let's send it down to Scooter, who has more on this Midland Lee team. Thanks, Courtney. Midland Lee is a school rich in football tradition. They've won state three times, including a back-to-back-to-back in 98, 99, and 2000. They've been to the playoffs over 30 times, including this year. And if they win this game, They'll win their share of the district championship, putting them at 13 district championships overall. One of the noble alumni that went here, Cedric Benson, who graduated from the University of Texas, running back. He went to the NFL and he played on the Bears, the Bengals, and the Packers. Yeah, and what's really interesting to note, too, about Cedric Benson is him and their current running back, Josh Trailer are the only two backs in Lee history to have three separate seasons with a 1,000-yard rushing. Felix Hinojosa is the quarterback. He runs there, still short of the first down. That's going to bring up a third down for Lee. Yeah, Courtney, I played against Cedric when he was with the uh, the Bears and on the same team with him. He yeah. was on the Packers here. These are our players to watch. Felix Hinojosa, the quarterback, a senior. He's a first-year starter. And then Josh Trailer, as we just mentioned, You'll want to watch him. He is third on the all-time rushing list at Lee. He needs 106 yards in this game to move into second place behind Cedric Benson. Hinojosa with the spin, rolling out, trying to find somebody to help him, and that's going to be incomplete. Pressured by Matt Jones, number 18. This guy is all over the field. You turn the film on of Permian, and this guy will jump off the screen at you. He's committed to Baylor. Just an old-school throwback-type player, the coaches tell us. You'll see him come into your screen and force Hinojosa to get rid of this ball quicker than he wants to. He's got a lot of speed coming at him pretty fast. Absolutely. Matt Jones with nine sacks on the year already. And if you saw, he was in on that tackle on Permian's kickoff, too. So this guy does a little bit of everything. This is Chase Stell back, and he will let the punt drop. Permian defense coming up big. They force a three and out, and we'll get to see them go to work again with this triple option. This is the 
This game played being played for a district championship. Odessa Permian wearing the white jerseys tonight. Midland Lee in maroon. Odessa has dominated the series as of late. They've, or excuse me, Permian has dominated the series as of late. They've won the last five meetings. Last year, they took down Lee 42 to seven. After trailing seven nothing, they scored six straight touchdowns. They pitch it out to Caden Horrell. He's around the edge. Look at him fight for the yards, and I think he's going to get the first down on that. He does move those chains. Caden Horrell was a fun guy to watch. I noticed him early on. Look at that block from Justin Hammond on the outside, Whoa, though. Horrell okay. finishes his runs. If you want to be entertained, watch him at the end of every time he has the ball. He's trying to run through multiple people. They're going to let it play out. Lee jumped, and the pass will be incomplete. A little early movement on the defense, defensive line for Lee. Defense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. So Permian will get to try it again. First and five from the 41 of Permian. Permian's really mixed up. They're running pass game nice early in this game to, to keep the defense on their heels so they can't just key in on one thing. Hand off up the middle. That's going to be good for a first down. Ed Williams once again. Williams. And you mentioned his physicality. He really first took down. this offseason to work on that, to get in really good shape, to add on some muscle, because he takes a beating every handoff, and they use him a lot. Yeah, that tailback position in the triple option – Every single time, someone's responsible for him. So whether they give you the ball or not, whether it's a defensive end crashing in on you or a linebacker that is responsible, they're going to hit you. First and 10 from the 46. They toss it. How is nobody on Justin Hammond? How is nobody on him? Touchdown, Permian. I mean, this is what the, the threat of the run does for you, Courtney. They didn't even play fake on this. And Hammond just up the seam, whether that's a miscommunication on the back end or he simply just got behind Damian Garcia there. I'm not exactly sure. He may have thought he had help over the top, but that's an easy one for Permian. Odessa Permian, they want that district title. They can win it outright with a win here. They're up 14 to nothing on their rival Midland Lee. Absolutely. They travel well, too. Their, their stands are, uh, are pretty packed with the Permian faithful. So they're trying to negate this Lee crowd over here that, that came into this game excited. You can tell. They filed in here early. It's pretty cold for a, a game in, in West Texas. They don't seem to mind, but... I think they're a bit stunned right now, already down 14 nothing. Justin Hammond with the 54-yard touchdown catch. Peyton Powell staying warm on the bike. All right, so Midland Lee went three and out on their first drive. Let's see if they can respond to a couple of scores here from Permian. Lee is coming off a really big game against Midland. Now there is a Midland and a Midland Lee. We have Midland Lee here tonight. They played Midland last week, and they scored 49 points in the first half. This is a little bit different animal, though, with Permian. This time they do hand it off, and the little switch in direction paying off. They are going to start on the 35, but let's get you a little bit more on Permian. Let's go down to Scooter. Thanks, Courtney. Permian is a football institution. They've won state championship six times. If you include this year, they'll, they've gone to the playoffs for 35 times. If they win this game, they'll win it outright, the district championship, and that will be their 27th district championship. 
One notable alumni is Roy Williams out of the University of Texas, wide receiver. He played for the Lions, the Cowboys, and the Bengals in the NFL. Felix Hinojosa takes the snap and immediately pulls it to run. Take it down at the 39. Excuse me, they're going to spot this at the 37. There's some room for Lee. Josh Trailer. An open sideline for Josh Trailer. No flags either. Courtney, you watch number seven, Fernando Hernandez with the seal block right there on the outside. He's blocking Easton Hernandez, too, as well as Logan Acosta with a block down the field. Josh Trailer was gone. Once he got this corner, watch him. Once he turns that up, Acosta with a nice block 15, 20 yards down the field. That's a 63-yard touchdown right there. By the way, he needed 106 yards coming into this game to become second on the all-time rushing list. He just got 63 of them. I'd say it's a safe bet he may get that tonight. I would think so. Keaton Armstrong, the the safety for Permian, you saw he had a good angle. He was coming inside out to try to make that open field tackle on Josh Trailer, which is not an easy thing to do. There's no guarantee he's going to make that. But Logan Acosta made sure it wasn't even an option. He sealed him back inside. This is where Trailer saw that block and cut right off of him, and he is gone. Clint Hartman is the head coach of Midland Lee. He's in his third season, and he's they're already making back-to-back playoff appearances. They clinched a spot in the playoffs last week with their win over Midland. That was a great response right there. That's the response they needed for sure. They couldn't uh, afford another three and out and give them the ball back to Permian without getting any points on the board. Chase Stell is back there, and this one's going to go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Again, Again, kick off in and out of the end zone. We've already seen some really big plays in this game. Justin Hammond with a 54-yard touchdown catch. Josh Trailer with a 64-yard, excuse me, 63-yard touchdown run. And it's 14-7, Permian. And Lee's right back in it. Let's see if their defense can get a stop here. So back to work goes Permian. And they pitch it out to Caden Worrell. Lee was all over it. Michael Hinojosa took him down. Lost a couple on that. It's going to be second and 12. Running. Tripped over nothing, and he goes down at the 20. Two back to back plays for a loss for Permian. All right, we got to put the Audi Zero speed tracker on that run by Josh Trailer. Let's take a look here. Saw 20 briefly. Oh, he's there. Max was 21.5. I mean, no one's catching that guy. He had an open sideline, and he took advantage of that. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. They forced another third and long here, Courtney. Got him backed up. Let's see if this lead defense can get off the field this time. Crowd's trying to help him out. It's loud. And (laughs) no luck on that play. 
you can feel the momentum shift here in the stadium. I mean, it looks like a different Lee team just on the sidelines. Everybody's into it. it shows you what a run like Trailer had on that previous drive can do to really energize your team. And now you're getting the ball back with the chance to tie. Fourth and long, the first time we've seen Permian punt tonight. Roberts will boot it. Drops at the 50 and takes a Permian roll. A spot it at about the just over the 30 yard line. I'll spot it at the 30. So you get a really good response from Josh Trailer on the run, and then your defense comes up big to get the stop, and here comes your offense again. Yeah, the lead defense really stood up on that last drive, and they were not backing up an inch. They were swarming to the ball. Their defensive line was penetrating those gaps and letting those linebackers run freely behind them, and they made the plays that they were supposed to. Lee's playing for something, too, tonight. A win here would give them a share of the district title. There's a first down for Midland Lee. That pass to... Josh Trailer, he can catch it too. Hinojosa going through his reads and he's smart. He sees that nobody is is open, so he dumps it down to Trailer. Get another first down. Keep moving the ball. Balls on the lead, 43. This time they hand it off to Trailer. He falls forward, picks up about half of it. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. The two Texas barbecues. Already seen three touchdowns in this one. One of them was from Josh Trailer. Thank you. And Scooter has a very special guest, speaking of Josh Trailer. Go, Scooter, what you got? That's right, guys. I am here with the father, Dexter Trailer. What are, what are you liking so far from this game? Well, I'm liking the intensity and, uh, and just the uh, steadfastness. You know, they uh, Lee knew that they were going to be up against a tough opponent tonight with Permian, and they knew that they were up against a tough quarterback. Josh and Peyton played together ever since they were in elementary. So um, I just told Josh, tonight is the night to shine, man. No matter how nervous you get, no matter how down you get, just keep on pushing, keep on pushing because, I mean, y'all are equally matched. You know, so don't get down if they come out and score a few touchdowns. Just do what you have to do. And so far, it's working out. And now you told me earlier that you played for Lee growing up. What does this matchup mean? What what kind of intensity can you expect from a game like this? Well, when I was growing up, Mojo was king uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. They had won a few state championships. But when I was a sophomore, we beat Permian twice. We dethroned the king, uh, beat them in the regular season and the quarterfinals. And we went on and went to state for the first time in 1983. Uh, of course, we lost, but the next year we came back and played them twice again. And they beat us 15 to 14 in the quarterfinals. Uh, we played in Lubbock's Jones Stadium. We had so many fans wanting to come to the games that neither Midland or Odessa Stadium was big enough to hold a capacity, so we had to play in Lubbock. And Permian beat us 15 to 14 in 1984 and went on and won state. I scored an 80-yard touchdown. Uh, that they called back. They say I jumped off sides. If, if I hadn't jumped off sides, I may have been governor of Texas today. <laughs> and uh, Go ahead. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Hey, thank you. Hopefully it's a good game. Thank you. Love hearing from Josh Trailer's dad. That's awesome. Meanwhile, Felix Hinojosa is carrying Lee down the field, but there's a flag in the backfield. Let's get the call. That's holding on Lee, so it's coming back. It's a couple of back-to-back -back pulls and runs by Hinojosa. He was smart to get down on the last play before that, saving himself. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the, the coaching staff is telling him, don't don't be taking any unnecessary shots. You get the first Anybody down, you slide. Back across, we have to to the I love Dexter Trailer 
saying if they would not have <laughs> said that he <laughs> jumped, he may be the governor of Texas. Hey, it's funny how things work out. That's got to be cool, though, to see your son playing for the team that you played for. That's pretty neat. Wow. Sheldon Bass Jr. all alone. First down. He's coming off a four-catch, 90-yard game last week against Midland. We've seen some receivers on, on both offenses really get behind the defense and get four or five yards of separation. Josh Trailer takes it immediately, taken it down. That's for a loss. Not going anywhere, says Matt Jones, who's going to Baylor. He's one of our players to watch. I mean, he's all over the field. He fights underneath the block there. He just slides inside. He just has great football instincts. And he knows how to use his leverage. He felt that the pulling to the guard and center point in his direction. He slides underneath both of them, makes the play in the backfield. Second and 13, Felix Hinojosa. Gets down, takes it inside the 25. Well, you know, going back to Matt Jones, that's something that Jeff Ellison was talking to us about, even from a really young age. He was standing out with his effort. He was always around the ball. Somehow he would get there and make an impact on the offensive team they were facing. Yeah, some people have that, that the feel for the game at a young age. It's not something you can really coach players up as. It's an instinct thing. Kind of like a running back that has great vision and patience. A lot of times defenders know how to slide inside, outside of blocks when they need to. Hinojosa airing it out. Wow, that was tight coverage. Sheldon Bass Jr. pulled it in. I believe it was Rakeeb Adeyemi who was right on him. Yeah. Adeyemi's right there in his hip pocket. Just doesn't get his head around soon enough. Tries to react and, and play and knock that ball out. Sheldon Bass doesn't let it happen. Good, strong, aggressive hands going to snatch that thing and high point it. Keep your feet in bounds and tie this game up. Permian jumped out to an early lead, and what a response we have seen now from Midland Lee after they trailed by two scores. Sheldon Bass Jr., one of their big targets, and he's had some really big catches, including that touchdown to tie it up. Yeah, I'd say they've responded, Courtney. This lead team is not backing down. They are not intimidated by Permian one bit. So Lee's defense was able to stop Permian the last time. Can they do it again? Once again, into the end zone for the touchback. So coming up at the half, you've heard of these teams before. Permian, Midland Lee, if you've seen the movie Friday Night Lights, that's who we're talking about. It, this rivalry is so big, they wrote a book about it, made a movie about it. We've got more on this rivalry from the current players and coaches. That's coming up at the half, so you'll want to stick around for that in nine minutes and 43 seconds left in the second quarter. Tie ball game. But this is what we expected. We expected one of the best games of the season here tonight. Permian starting on their own 30. And Williams up the middle, picks up a couple of yards. Audi Zero Speed Tracker, we're putting it on Sheldon Bass at the top of your screen as he 
ran forward to pick up that touchdown to tie the game. About 16 miles per hour on that. He didn't have to. That wasn't a double move or anything. He just had one-on-one coverage, and he just beat Adeyemi out there on the outside. They pitch it out now to Caden Morrill. You've been talking a lot about Caden Morrill leading up to this game, too. I mean, just watch that run right there. You see him, yeah. watch him finish. <laughs> it's If you're in the back end, if you're in the secondary, and you see Caden Horrell with a head of steam running downhill, like he just finishes every single run. It, it cannot be fun to try to take him on. He's trying to punish the defenders. Third and two. Up the middle, they get the first down. That's Ed Williams. And his dad played in the NFL, also Ed Williams. He was a linebacker at Texas and then was drafted in 1984 by the Patriots in the second round. And he actually trains with him. So how about that extra motivation, having your dad who played in the NFL train with you in the offseason? Yeah, I guess you have to listen to him. You can't tell you. You don't know what you're talking about, Dad. Yeah. Well, I kind of do, actually. Yeah. It's kind of my thing. Are you going to say that someday to your no, kids? my kids won't listen to me no matter what I tell them. They have it at the... Remember, this is a really big game. District championship on the line. Permian, if they win tonight, they win the district championship outright. If Lee wins, they win a share of the title along with Permian. Powell still got it. There he goes, pitching to Justin Hammond. Maybe tacked on a couple. Brings up third down here at midfield. Right there. We, we got one of the first times we've seen them go to their third read in that triple option, the pitch. And, and that pitch relationship is so key. That's what you work on all the time, thousands and thousands of reps. you got to have that, that relationship between the quarterback and whoever your pitch guy is. Right there, they executed well, but the, the lead defense was all over it. Third and five. And timeout is called by Lee. AJ, so you have some experience in the, in the option. You you guys ran that at a triple option in high school. So, and you didn't just play on defense in high school. <laughs> where, yeah. where were you in the I was triple one, option? I was usually the, the tailback behind the quarterback. When we did it in high school, we were not out of the shotgun like the pistol like we see Permian. Uh, the quarterback's under center, and I was the guy. You have to have like a, a soft squeeze on the ball, as they call it. And the quarterback is going to ride. He's going to ride you into the line as he's reading either the defensive end or the four technique. And we're seeing that tonight. There's just so many moving parts. That's why you have to rep it over and over and over yeah. again. It's even more impressive what Powell has been able to do coming here in the spring and already having such a good feel for it. Yeah, and you've talked a lot when we've been talking about this game about, you know, practicing that mesh point. It's so critical, and you do it a million times. And it's still amazing to me that Powell has only been with this program since January, and he's gotten it down. Yeah, the majority of these kids grow up doing this from middle school on. They have been running this style of offense. So for Powell to come from something completely different, it's impressive. It shows who he is. There goes Peyton Powell to the air. Oh! Off the fingertips of Mason Sellers. Oh, that would have been fun. Powell can't feel completely comfortable in the pocket. Lee doing a good job of getting pressure. Still a pretty ball thrown here just out of the reach of Mason Sellers here. Hmm. So it's fourth and five, and here is Permian on to punt. So close to a touchdown, or at least in the red zone. And they call for the fair catch inside the 20. Lee's defense once again putting their foot down. After those first couple drives, I feel like they've kind of settled in and know what they're doing. That happens sometimes, too, where a defense can come out and just the first couple drives and you just can't really get your bearing, you can't get your footing for whatever reason. The offense is kind of not taking you by surprise, but they just make things happen. 
and then you, you start to settle down. You get into the rhythm of the game, and then your defense could you could give up two touchdowns the first two drives and not give up another touchdown the rest of the game. And sometimes you just have to get in a rhythm as a defense. I know you usually talk about offenses getting into rhythm, but it happens for defenses too. There goes Josh Trailer forward, met by a swarming group of Permian Panthers. Pickup of one. Both of these teams are 7-2 and two overall. Lee's only losses to Abilene and Tuscosa. He's also in the running for a share of this district title. Inching slowly forward, but it's third down now. Third down. Third down. Ball's on the 24. These are the times when you... It's likely a passing situation for Lee when you need to make sure you have maybe a couple of blockers accounting for Matt Jones, number 18. The best outside rusher here on this Permian defense. Mosa out of the gun, looking downfield. Throws a dart in there to Logan Acosta and picks up the first down. Let's see this catch, Courtney. I thought there was no way he was going to be able to come up with this one from up in the booth. Oh, he got it. Did he keep it? Yes, he did. He rolled onto his back here, showing great body control. Watch this. Pulls it in and starts to roll so he can secure that thing. Maybe bobbing around, but doesn't matter if he comes down with it. They go to the air again, this time a little too deep, intended for Sheldon Bass, Jr., on that previous play, you see number 21 safety for Permian, Keaton Armstrong. He thought he had a, a pick. He thought he was getting an interception right there. And Acosta just finishes through the ball, catches that, rolls to his back, secures the catch, and keeps the drive moving. That's some trust between the quarterback and his wideout right there. Yeah, it is. Hinojosa really, he did a good job of sitting, standing tall in the pocket there, and he, he sat on that back foot and really pulled the trigger and stepped into it. I mean, you have to if you're going to throw across the middle like that in that traffic. Josh Trailer, first down, still going inside the 35. He goes. I mean, he's been doing this all year, Court. He came into this game with almost 1,400 yards rushing. And largely, obviously, the offensive line doing a good job at the line of scrimmage. But they, when you run this style of offense, whether you're Permian, Permian or Lee, your receivers have to be superb blockers down the field, and Lee especially has blocked very well down the field tonight. Did he catch that in bounds? Nope, he was out. Josh Trailer, by the way, you know we're watching his rushing yardage tonight. He's at 98 yards. He needed 106 to become second all-time in Lee history. Don't blink. You'll miss it. Yep. May happen on this play. Eight yards away from it. Second and ten coming up from the 33. Talking about Josh Trailer, guys. He's also had six 100-yard games this year. He's also a two-year captain, and that's voted on by the players, so you can tell he has the utmost respect from his teammates. There he goes. He got it. Yep. He has now got the second most yards in Lee history, and he gets a touchdown on that run, too. He really got to showcase his speed on this one, too. I mean, obviously the last one, but man, once he hits that hole and he gets his foot in the ground, he gets downhill in a hurry. There's defenders there for Permian, and he's just too quick. It almost, it's like he's shot through a, a tunnel right here. Permian defenders think they're there. They take a, a bad angle due to the speed of trailer. Eight carries for 132 yards tonight, and we are in the second quarter. Yes, this guy has already had a huge night. He could have a gigantic night on the ground. 
if they can find a way to keep this up. Permian, if I'm Permian, I might start bringing nine, ten guys in the box, force them to throw it over the top, and prove that you can you can beat us passing. Twenty-one unanswered points for Midland Lee. It's crazy how fast that changes. Yeah. The momentum can swing from one team to another. It's like watching a basketball game. The team can be up twenty. You take a bathroom break, you come back, and the game's tied. I feel like that's what we're dealing with here. Just shows that's why we don't have commercials, Courtney. That's right, no commercials. Can't. We don't want you to miss anything. With that touchdown, guys, it is. Guys, the atmosphere is crazy down here with that last touchdown. This is the loudest game I've been at all season. I can barely hear myself talking right now. And it's cold out there. Temperatures in the 30s tonight here in Midland, Texas. Let's hear from the Midland League players. What makes this program different is the, the people who have walked before us have already set a foundation of what's expected out of this program. This program has a rich history in winning. I think that we coach them and train them just like you would at the next level. If we run on the left hash, we're going to be able to run some ground. Our kids are here for weights in the morning. We have an athletic period of an hour. Then we practice for two hours after school. Our kids are here for film. As coaches, we spend more time with our kids, and they spend more time with us than our own families on both sides of that. That chemistry is certainly paying off here tonight. 21 unanswered points for Midland Lee. Permian trying to change that here on this drive. Let's see if this Permian offense takes a few more shots down the field. Had some success early with it. Yeah, they found Justin Hammond wide open for the second touchdown of the game on a 54-yard strike. Second and a yard. Ed Williams gets the call. First down, Permian. This lead defense has definitely stood up after those first two drives. For the most part, done a, a good job stopping the run, but the, the, the tough thing if you're Lee is you can never relax. You can never take a breath because we have Peyton Powell in the backfield at any moment. He can pull that thing down, make three or four people miss, take it to the house running, or beat you over the top with a throw. Powell will throw it. It's low but caught. Tyler Ramage. He's got a couple of touchdown catches this season. That puts the ball at the 44 of Permian. Second and four. Hand off to Williams. It's going to be real close. You see where they spot this. And they say first down. Yeah, that's, the a, that's exactly what this offense is designed for. You have a second and four. You run the, that triple right there, and the quarterback takes what they give you. Okay, the, the read was to give it. The DN was not crashing down. It falls forward. You get a first down and keep moving the ball. First and ten from the 48 of Permian. There's another first down thanks to Ed Williams. And Permian inside the 40 of Midland Lee. How about this offensive line, though, given Williams' room to run? Powell coming off play action. He's got somebody on his tail. It was tipped, not intercepted, but the defense, Carl Taylor. Making things happen in the secondary. Now, he's got five picks this season. I'm sure he would have liked to have six. Peyton Powell is avoiding pressure all over the place in the pocket. Takes a shot as he gets the ball down the field. And like you said, Carl Taylor, five interceptions on the year. He's trying to get another one. Got his hand on it. Ja Second and ten. It was Jas Jasper... Partridge there applying the pressure on Powell. This one a quick pass out to Tyler Ramage. 
Inside the 10 he goes. They're pushing him forward. He's just short. Talk about a team effort. Getting a little help. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear their sideline. The, the Permian stands get all juiced up for this. You see uh, when your offensive linemen come sprinting 40 yards down the field to try to finish over the pile. You see big Dawson Reynolds running with them. It really energizes your team though, and it didn't help there. But Wow, not much doing for Ed Williams on that carry. Paco Maldonado. It's not the worst thing in the world, though, Courtney, for Permian. You have the ball on barely the two-yard line going in, 145 left in the game. You don't want to give the ball back to Lee with a whole lot of time after you score. He'll try him again. Second time will work. And Williams with a couple of touchdowns. And we're a PAT away from a tied ball game again for the second time. I mean, we're in for a treat tonight with Running back Ed Williams of Permian, and then Josh Trailer on the Lee side of things. Both of these guys are absolute studs. PAT is good. 21 all. A minute 34 left here in the first half. You see, never satisfied. Look at it. Comes off the field. Having a great game. Williams is still getting coached up. That's why they consistently win at both of these programs. Every single thing. Attention to detail day in and day out. They stress that. You can tell Ed Williams has a lot of experience, too. It was his sophomore season when he became the lead back for this Permian team. And that's paying off in the last couple of seasons. Last year he had over 1,300 yards and 17 touchdowns. He's got over 1,300 yards and a couple more touchdowns. Now 21 touchdowns this season. Just all of that experience, all those reps in big-time games. There's not a whole lot he hasn't seen or been a part of here at Permian. He's been in all the the pressure pack situations you can think of, like you said, being the featured back from his sophomore year on. It's a lot of mileage on that body, too. He's, yeah. That's why I think it shows the kind of guy he is, too, to try to pack some muscle on in the offseason, to be durable enough to, to handle all of these carries that he's going to get. Even in season, Jeff Ellison was talking to us this week about the game and about Ed Williams, and they talked to him a few games ago about his conditioning, and he's really stepped it up because they use him a lot, so they know how important the conditioning is going to be. Taylor took a hard hit when he went down. Permian elected a little pooch punt. Trying to get down there and cover, and we've seen Lee either on their kickoff returns either fake the reverse or actually hand it off almost every single time now. So first and 10 from the 29, and they've got a minute 28 to work with until the half. A quick pass out. It goes to Loic Fungi. That's the one thing in these style of offenses, Courtney. They're they're not built to play from behind. If you're down 21 points with not much time to go, they're not really built to score quickly, or if you're trying to score at the end of the half here. They can, but they're not really built for that. Back to Fungi they go. They pick up the first down, but he does stay inbounds. But they'll pause the clock to move the chains. Yeah, at least still has two timeouts as well. So they have plenty of time here, especially with the clock stopping after first downs. From the 45. Wide open in the middle of the field was Logan Acosta. He dropped it, but it was scooped up. The fumble scooped up by Fernando Hernandez, getting a little extra yards. That's why it pays to to run to the ball offensively or defensively. Hernandez is right there to scoop this thing up as it just comes off, bounces off his own knee off of Costa. Permian's called timeout. So, Courtney, who gets the receiving yards there? <laughs> I'm trying to I'm genuinely asking. Maybe I should I know that. But does Hernandez 
get a 40-yard reception, whatever that is? That's a great question. I'm sure plenty of people know. out there know. We'll be yelling at their Twitter stream. The team's just glad they have the extra yardage, and they're still moving. They're just patting Hernandez on the back saying, thank you yeah. for running to the ball. Situational awareness? Yes. The coach will tell you Nailed all the time, it. oh, when you think you're 40 yards away from the ball and you don't need to, you can start coasting. No. Things like that happen. Good things happen when you get around the ball, offensively or defensively. And right there, that was huge for Lee to recover that right there. 43 seconds left in the half. Ball is on the nine. It is first and goal for Midland Lee. They're trying to take a lead into the locker room after trailing 14 to nothing. Josh Trailer gets the call. Picks up a yard. Clock still rolling. Trailer again. There's some room for him. Touchdown, Lee. Recording number seven, Fernando Hernandez, the MVP of this drive. Watch him on the right side of your screen, right there. The block on Chase Stell, number 22, sealing him back inside. He has the big fumble recovery, and right there he sets the edge. Tosses Stell down at the end. And allows Trailer to bounce this one outside. Extra point is good, and Midland Lee with a 28-21 lead. 13 seconds to go here in the first half. Already an outstanding night for Josh Trailer. Second on the all-time rushing list at Midland League. Hit that milestone tonight. Let's see if they keep this up in the second half. This may be a case of who has the ball last. These guys are, are answering. They were down 14 to nothing. Scored 21 unanswered points. And they come out, put a very quick drive together to tack on another touchdown with 13 seconds to go. And Lee will get the ball to start the second half as well. Yeah, that's right. Just another reason why that was a huge score for them. Take some momentum into half when you know you're getting the ball back. Coach will let you know, hey, we... Guys, we did. We had a shaky start. We absolutely responded, and guess what? We get the ball to start the second half, too. Let's go put this thing up. Let's get up two scores on these guys. Kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback. Got to give you the Audi Zero Speed Tracker on this. Kickoff out of the end zone. Let's take touchback. a look at it here. Now, this is the play where Very Logan Acosta fumbled it. And then Fernando Hernandez scooped it up, hitting 14 miles per hour on that. It was Acosta. It's true teamwork right there, Gordon. Yeah. Acosta was... I don't think they want to run that play again. You know, Hernandez was actually coming over to get a block for Acosta there, and then he just happened to see the ball pop up. He's trying to block for his buddy, and he ends up recovering a fumble that allows them to keep possession and get a big score before half. Odessa will pitch it to Justin Hammond. Huge hit. Charlie Gonzalez. Gonzalez making his presence felt here at the last play of the first half. Oh. That's the best when you don't even have to wrap up. You just run right through the ball carrier. Look at the hair, too. And the cowboy collar. How do you not love this guy? Midland Lee trying to push forward for a share of the district title. They are on top of their rival, Odessa Permian, 28 to 21 at the half. They were down 14 to nothing, scored 21 unanswered points, and then put a very quick drive together. That's got us to our score here, 28 21. Lee on top. They've lost the last five to Permian. 
Let's send it down to Scooter. All right, guys, I'm here with Coach Hartman. You start 0-14, then you score 28 unanswered points. What's your message to the team at halftime, two quarters away from a share of the district championship? Well, our deal is to, to trust the process. We tell them that we're about the first half. They did that. Now we got to go win the second half. we got to make it 0-0. But the, the whole thing was we just had to settle down. We are a little nervous. Uh, and they're an option team. When they got to throw the football to beat you, that ain't what they like to do. So, yeah, they scored the first two passing, but that's not what they like to do. So we got them in an uncomfortable situation. Coach, what's the game plan going for with that option? The option is a very unique very unique offense. What's the game plan to stop the running attack? Uh, State, we're going to make a couple adjustments. They got some wide splits, and we're going to make some some inside moves and some stuff. But as far as the the, the plan, the plan is good. We just now have to understand that they, the ball goes through 27, 4, 25, and make them beat us with somebody else. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Clint Hartman fired up at the half. His Midland Lee Rebels on top of the Permian Panthers, 28 to 21 after being down 14 to nothing in this one. season finale of season one of Friday Night Stripes presented by Adidas. We've been live on Twitter since September 7th when we started things off in Atlanta with McEachern and Cedar Grove. But let's take you back a couple weeks ago. We had another district title up for grabs when Cardinal Gibbons took on Hollandale. This is going to be a great atmosphere here in Fort Lauderdale. A win here tonight for Cardinal Gibbons. Gives them the district title. Scalzo has to step up. Right over the middle he goes. It's a touchdown for Cardinal Gibbons. The pass to Mejon Wright. Scalzo stepping up and the pass is picked. Intercepted by Hollandale Rashad Pratt. Pratt just steps underneath the receiver. I don't think Scalzo even saw him. I see the big play chain right now. I'm about to touch it. This was actually handmade by the coach. Yeah, Coach Lovett. Coach Lovett, you can kind of tell, but I like it though. <laughs> Scalzo, pass over the top. Second touchdown of the night for Cardinal Gibbons. Handoff going to Tavares. Daniel, the ball comes loose. It's scooped up. Sydney Porter, two weeks in a row. It's a good couple weeks for this kid. Big play chain for Hollandale. Big play chain. We got to get the backstory. Jamari Williams told me that this just represents utter and complete domination. And the district title officially now going to Cardinal Gibbons. A 21 to nothing win over Hollandale on Friday Night Stripes. It has been a really fun first season of Friday Night Stripes. We've had some big moments. So for the season finale game, we thought we had to go back and share some of those. We're going to hand out some awards, starting with Best Atmosphere. Yeah, we're going back to Ohio for this one. How big time is this? The game ball being delivered by a skydiver. Must mean that we're in Ohio, week five. 
live of Friday Night Stripes. That was pretty incredible. A skydiver started the game off by delivering the game ball. And AJ, you played high school football in Ohio. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I did, and I, unfortunately, I think I got beat by both of these teams, St. Xavier <laughs> and LaSalle, but being there in person again to, to feel just the electricity in the air, this skydiver just put it over the top. It's pretty unbelievable when a skydiver delivers a ball to any game, let alone a high school football game, so that was really uh, special to be a part of, and I'm glad I got to come. I even got to bring my dad to that game. Yeah, that was awesome. We had him in the booth with us. How fun was that? Okay, so we're going to stay in Ohio because we have the biggest surprise. Now, trick plays are always fun, but this one was a little bit different. Jared Primer is their punter. You will also hear us call his name as a wide receiver, and they fake it. He's running. He's got plenty of room to pick up the first down, and then an extra about seven yards. St. X in business. You started the game very aggressive. Take me through that decision to go for it on fourth down, the fake punt. Well, the reality is it wasn't a designed fake punt. I gave I give Jared Primer the freedom. He's such a great athlete. We give him the freedom to make a decision. How amazing was that? We were shocked by this when Scooter did that interview at halftime that the coach allowed Jared Kreimer to call his own fake punt. You talk about having ultimate trust in a player, a high school coach giving Jared Kreimer the just the freedom. Hey, if it's there, you take it. And look, if you see, they're backed up on their own 20 yard line, and he calls his own number. And guess what? It turns out well for the team. And St. Xavier just, just looked really, really good that night. I think that was a part of the spark. Yeah, Jared Kreimer had a great game, too. We were a big fan of his. It's okay. So, our next award, the Creator Award, and we're going Best Hair, which means we're going to Las Vegas. Fiaseo in the backfield, give it to him, look at him go. The speed! Nobody can catch this guy! 90 yards! He was like Forrest Gump there, just kept going, and they couldn't get to him. All the people want to know, what do you use for shampoo? Stop, what is this? Uh, I like Pantene the best. <laughs> makes it smooth and it makes it smell good too how about zyrus fiaseo he was an incredible we didn't even know if he was going to play in this game because he had a hand injury and came out and had a great game and you can't miss him on the field because of his hair you absolutely cannot miss him you can see that the club on his right hand in that hair is just everywhere and credit to scooter with the hard-hitting questions asking what kind yeah. of shampoo he uses and <laughs> fiaseo was actually very open and honest and loved the way it smells and the way it helps his hair uh it feels so hey Credit to him, man. These guys, uh, they have personalities. I love it. Yeah, I like that. That was a fun game, too. All right. Our next award is the Swagger Award. We're going to Fort Lauderdale. Let's do it, guys. Scalzo stepping up, and the pass is picked. Rashad Pratt. I don't think Scalzo even saw him. I see the big play chain right now. I'm about to touch it. This was actually handmade by the coach. Yeah, Coach Lovett. Coach Lovett. You can kind of tell, but I like it, though. <laughs> What I really liked about this was Herman Lovett made a big play chain, not just a turnover chain, because you can have big plays in a ball game that aren't just turnovers. And we had some good turnover things, the turnover belt. The Chucky doll was a little bit scary for me, but I loved the big play chain. Yeah, the, the big play chain, I liked that the coach made it himself, too. Oh, he, yeah. he spent the time. To the, it shows the players how much he truly cares about this. So it's it's pretty uh, it's a special thing. Like you said, it's not just the, the turnover chain. We see these things going around college football. So why not? Make it your own. And they uh, they did it. And those players seem to try to make those big plays to, to carry that chain around with pride. All right, so a lot of these guys that we've seen all season are being recruited. And part of the, part of the recruiting process, if you're a college coach, you want to make a statement, an impression, right? Well, how about an entrance in a helicopter? Indianapolis, let's go. So talk about an entrance. How about a helicopter ride in? We are so fortunate to be joined by Indiana head coach Tom Allen, who arrived by helicopter to watch this game. So Tom Allen flew in and landed on the practice field in Indianapolis for the Ben Davis Warren Central game to watch a couple of talented players, David Bell and Jaden George. If you're being recruited, what do you think about that? It would have to feel pretty good, I yeah. think. If a coach, when any time a head coach comes to your game as a high school, it's a big deal. I remember when coaches used to come to our high school to see certain players, and if it was a head coach, it's a huge deal. Everyone's talking about it. The teachers are taking pictures with, with Jim Trestle. I still remember when he came to my high school, your, your teachers are trying to sneak out and have someone watch their class so they can get a, a selfie with the coaches. <laughs> so for a coach to come to your game, let alone to fly in a helicopter, and Coach, coach Allen stayed the whole time, too. He yeah. didn't just pop in, say hi, and warm up. 
him. So he watched the whole game, came up with us in the booth. So he uh, maybe that'll go a long way in, in landing some recruits in the future. Yeah, and he, he stayed and he had a game at noon the next day. So that was pretty impressive. It was great to talk with him. All right, so Adidas, they're about speed. So Adi Zero, fastest player. We're going to stay in Indianapolis. It's going to David Bell. Oh, yeah. Fake the handoff. George looking to go deep. Looking for somebody. Guess who? David Bell all day. Both these guys are going to love that one on their highlight reel for years and years to come. It's a thing of beauty here by David Bell. David Bell was really impressive. They went to him early. He's a four-star wide receiver. Still is not committed anywhere. He hasn't, and I think he has the talent. He has the production in the resume to where he can take his time. Everyone is, is coming after him, and for good reason. He, he can do it all. He, he's a big physical receiver. And as you see there, he, he wins our Audi Zero Speed player, our fastest player, and uh, getting up there to 20 miles an hour almost. This guy is, is going to be making plays on Saturdays for the next three or four years. Yeah, it's been really fun to have the Audi Zero Speed tracker, too, just to see how some of these breakaway plays, how fast they get up to. All right, top individual performance. Sometimes you have to wait your turn for your moment to shine, and this player did just that. Still at Indianapolis, still at Warren Central. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Romir Elliott. Have a day. Romir Elliott, the running back for Warren Central, his first year as the featured back had 22 carries, 223 yards, and three touchdowns in that game against Ben Davis. Yeah, that's a heck of a night, I would say. And Romir Elliott, they, hey, at Warren Central, you have to wait your time. You have a lot of talent in front of you at all times. So for him to step in at the full-time role as the back, he really answered the bell. 223 yards and three touchdowns against a big rival like Ben Davis. It had to feel good to be Romir Elliott that night. That was a big game, Warren Central getting that big win over their rival, Ben Davis, and a lot of fun for us to call that one. We had a lot of good moments coming from that game. Well, the Adidas Freak is next. That is our top defensive play, and that was in our last game back in Fort Lauderdale. First and goal from the nine. Scalzo airing it out. Did he make the catch? Yes. Yeah, interception touchdown. Trevante Cunningham. Cunningham, the one hander. Without a doubt, wow. interception controlled that to the ground. Wow. This was incredible to see this one-handed catch. I know it was on defense, but it was really impressive. <laughs> I mean, every time I watch the replay, I I'm more and more impressed. I know Odell Beckham Jr. kind of made the one-handed grab famous, and it seems like at every level now, more and more one-handed, uh, amazing, freakish catches like this are happening. So Cunningham right here, this is just its an unbelievable play. I mean, you have to be a freak to be able to not only control that, but grab it, pull it to your body, and, and come down with it. And just a huge momentum swing for the team. All right, top pitch and catch. We're going to the ATL. Marietta, show us what you got. Bailey again, plenty of time. Eric Gilbert. Look where it was thrown by, by Bailey as well. You hear that said all the time where you throw it where only your receiver can catch it. You're going to be very, very successful, and both these guys already are, and they will be on Saturdays. Man, Mariota, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> Marietta, not to be confused with Marcus Mariota, has some really talented kids. Eric Gilbert, he's so impressive to see in person. And he plays defensive end, too, by the way. He can do it all. And when you're an athlete, you can kind of do that. It, it doesn't matter where they, they put you. It's plug and play. And at the next level as well, I know coaches are fighting over where he will be, offense, defense. You, you could line him out in the slot. He's a receiver. He's tight end, defensive end. And I think we're going to be seeing this guy make plays for years and years to come. He has the, the physical tools to, to play on Sunday someday. And what's crazy, too, is he's the number one athlete in next year's class. So the class of 2020. So he still has one more football That's season scary. in high school. Scary to wow. think of. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our Three Stripe Life Award. Going to stay with Marietta. We playing for Marietta High School. This was where I first fell in love with the game of football. I had the opportunity to experience my first win, my first championship. And so those are some of the elements that went into creating a clique that I knew that would represent not only Marietta football, but the city of Marietta. So this is so neat. Chris Williams, who now works for Adidas, des designed this cleat for his alma mater. He played at Marietta, went to high school there, and they're the only high school team with a custom cleat. 
and, and you could tell, speaking to these Marietta players, they, they take pride in that. They love it. it. It's a special, special thing to have one of your alumni design custom-made cleats for you. Uh, it, it has to feel good for them. And I think that goes a long way, and that's why the culture there is so good, and they're so used to winning. They, they consistently perform at a high level, and this just is a little icing on the cake. We've had some good games this season, but there can only be one that is labeled the best game, and it happened in Atlanta. Throwing up a prayer, and it's picked off in the end zone. Rashad Bass breaks the streak for the first time in 10 years. Marietta takes down McEachern. That came down to a missed PAT, finished off with a pick in the end zone, and Marietta was able to beat McEachern for the first time in 10 tries. That's a decade. Yeah, and Courtney, I remember when we were leaving this game, we sat up in the booth for a while watching the celebration by Marietta, and we were walking to our cars 30, 40 minutes later, and I think Marietta was still on the field, still kind of soaking in what it meant for them to go there and get a big victory. So it was really – it was fun to be a part of that. I wanted to stay around. I still remember kind of peeking over the fence, watching their team yeah. and their coaches. It really, really meant a lot for these guys. All right, our Alpha Bounce Award is going to a special announcement we made at the end of our very first game between Cedar Grove and McEachern. You are officially invited to the 2020 All-American Game. Let's go, baby. Yes, you're in, brother. You are in. What do you have to say? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I worked so hard for this. Jamil Burroughs, what a player for McEachern, and we're going to see him in next year's All-American game. You could tell the, the emotion, too, after yeah. when he found this news out. It, it's, it really it means something to this guy. It made you even a bigger fan of, of what he does on the field, off the field. You can tell he cares about it. His teammates care about him. They were all happy for him yeah. as well. And he, he's a big boy that can move. And it's always fun to watch big guys like that run around the field and making plays all over the place. Yeah, he's a Georgia commit, so we will see him playing on Saturdays for sure in a couple of years. All right, our final award is the Team Adidas Award. And it goes to the team who is still keeping five alive. Some of you have it hard. Some of you have some tough things going on in your life. Well, be humble, just like Ray John was. That's who we are. That's who the Indians are. Who are we? Indians. Who are we? Indians. Who are we? Indians. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? At the football games, they all raise their hands, the five. It gives me chills every time I see a game, just to know that that's recognition for my son and what he brought to the team as a person and not just a player. He definitely lives on. Former McEachern standout Rajon Bennett was killed back in 2010 in a murder-suicide by his mom's estranged ex-boyfriend, and he shielded his sister to save her life but sacrificed his own. And Kyle Hockman and McEachern are still keeping five alive, and his memory even though these players never played with him. Yeah, it's crazy to think this was eight years ago. This this horrible thing happened, and credit to this team and the coaches there for keeping keeping five alive. It was really special to be there and see how much it meant to all of them. Just a horrible tragedy that happened, but they're they're taking what they can. You can see his mom is very positive. She wants his memory to live on, and they're really doing a good job of making that happen. Yeah, that was great to see and great to hear the stories from the coaches about the memory of Rajon Bennett and what kind of person he was. Obviously, an outstanding human being to save the life of his sister and give up his own. Well, it's been a really fun first season. We've had some big moments, and uh, high school football is uh, pretty big across the country. I think we've found that out firsthand. Yeah, it really is. And, and you talk to guys at, at the next level in college and the NFL, they all remember their experience playing under the lights on Friday night. And we've gotten to uh, to watch and, and commentate some of the best around the country. Yep. So season two, let's do it, right? <laughs> Everybody wants a season two, of course. Midland Lee on top of Odessa Pervian, 28 to 21. 
at the half. What a first half it was. Lots of scoring. Lee was down 14 to nothing. Scored 21 unanswered points and then had a really quick touchdown before the half to take a touchdown lead. Absolutely, and you could see Coach Hartman was absolutely juiced going into halftime, excited, yeah. thinks he has Permian on their heels, and he feels like if we can go up two scores, we could possibly score a touchdown here in this first drive of the second half, get up 14 points, really have Permian kind of uh, out of wits if they're they don't want to play from behind they want the lead they want to be able to pound the ball and not have to put it in the air too many times yeah this is a really big rivalry remember a district championship is on the line and this rivalry dates back a very long time but we'll let the players tell you about it I take so much pride in playing Texas football. What towns do you know that just close everything down just to come watch a football game on Friday nights? People get involved in football in Texas like they don't anywhere else. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hands off. <laughs> everything is on the line. Here in uh, West Texas, it's all about football. I mean, there's not much to do. There's no water. It's not but football on Friday nights. It sends chills down your spine because on Friday nights, it's like everybody in town is at the game. As the air starts to cool up a little bit, then there seems to be a, a different electricity in the air on Fridays, which is a, an exciting thing. It's just a sport that developed down here, and, and there's so many rural cities in Texas that not a lot to do in rural towns, and so Friday nights and football just became big. And football is big in the state of Texas, but in some areas it's a little more important. Uh, and out here in Midland, Odessa, it's very important. Once you think of Texas sports, the first thing that popped in your head is football. As a freshman that watched the rivalries, it was like, dang, this is something I want to experience. This is something I want to like, want to do. Well, when I was a kid, you know, growing up here, uh, that's all I ever wanted to do is play for Permian. You know, as, as a young kid, I wanted to play at Permian High School. A lot of these kids show up and they want to be a Permian football player. But the reality of it is a lot of people don't understand all the sacrifice that goes in to uh, getting the opportunity to play on a Friday night at Ratliff. Permian was always known as a no-nonsense. They hustle. Their, their, their kids played the game hard. They made very few mistakes. The games were so big back then because a loss meant you were out of the playoffs and they were winning virtually every year. In a 30-year span, you know, Permian went to 11 state championships. So that means one ever less than three years, you were going to a state championship. As a Permian person, I hate Midland Lee. We've always hated Midland Lee, and it's always going to happen. Getting ready for them, I mean, there's no special way to do it. You just get ready to go after somebody you hate and just hit them in the mouth. Big target on your back, playing for Permian. I mean, everybody wants to beat you going into any game. You're not going to have nobody on your side. This rivalry goes back decades. When I was going to school and when Middle Lee and Permian play, you can go rob a bank and get out of town. Because everybody, the sheriff, everybody, police officer, everybody's at the game. I mean, you go to church on Sunday and everyone asks you, how's the team looking? How's Lee looking? How are you prepared for the game? How do you feel? The week leading up, you're more aggressive in practice. It's, it's just the overall atmosphere around is just more hype. We just got to focus on each game each week, but you definitely got to have your bigger goals of winning district and to win district, you gotta get through Lee. We have a standard to hold up to because we're a known brand like throughout the nation. Even though we're in small West Texas, everybody knows about Midland Lee. You can go to New York with a Midland Lee shirt on, they'll be like, oh yeah, you're from West Texas. Lee football was built on tradition and uh, a lot of hard work. I mean, you wanted to play football for Midland Lee. And so out here, throughout the history, you better run the football. The schools are 11 miles apart, okay, and we're separated by two towns, so we're right there. When towns played each other, it was for bragging rights for those towns. So it's your town against my town, your school against my school. One side would be all maroon, the other side would be all black and yelling rebels and mojo, and it sends chills up your back. I still get chills every time the game's played. People come from all around to watch this game. Uh, it happens every year. I have goosebumps as I tell you that. Practice was always hard, but Permian Week, you knew it was Permian Week. It circled every year. 
It is the game. That's the one you really want to win, Berman game. The atmosphere is, is so exciting. That's what makes the rivalry between Odessa and Midland, and I think that's how it's getting back right now. I think it's special because the community gets behind the team and behind the school. During the week, uh, everybody does, does their own thing. But on Friday night, the focus is on, high, on the high school team, and everybody comes there to be a part of it. Getting to play in front of 35, 40,000 people just shows you how much it meant to those communities and, and, and how much the bragging rights mean to those communities. 20,000 from Midland and 20,000 from Odessa. The Rebel fans saying Rebels and the Mojo fans when they're out and a yelling Mojo, I mean, you can, you can hear it on the field and it, it gets you fired up as a player, I'll tell you that much. There's nothing better than when 10 plus thousand people start chanting mojo. It's something extremely special. When you walk out there and there are 25,000 people in the stands, you know, it's an electric feeling. And, you know, to see your premier rival across the field, you know, of course, it just it gives you goosebumps right now, you know, thinking about it. Both programs are great. When you put two, two good teams like that together, Great things are going to happen. This year, probably they'll go big school 6A and we'll go small school 6A because of our enrollment. So only a chance we have to play them is this game. I mean, I, I expect nothing but an intense football game. That's it. I mean, I, I expect both teams are going to be in the playoffs. I probably imagine this game would be for a district championship. I've played in a lot of uh, football games over my uh, career, and if I could go back and do it all over again, if I could go back and play in one game, I would go back and play in the league Permian football game. What better atmosphere or, or life table can you put a kid in? You know, you put them under strain, you're going to see how they're going to react. You want to know how a kid's going to react? Watch this game. See if they're going to be timid or not. See if they're going to hit them in the face or not. See if they're going to get up and they get knocked down or not. This is important to both teams. It's important to both communities. And I think it's also important for kids. This is a memory they'll never forget. Never. Guys, we are back here on Friday Night Stripes. I am with head coach, Odessa Permian head coach. Coach, you started out fast, 14-0. Then you had in the half down one touchdown. What was the message to your team? We're in a dogfight. I mean, we expected this. This is, you know, that's why you guys are here for the Permian Lee uh, battle. And this is it. We're expecting they're a very good football team. And we've got to come out and continue to fight. Coach Ellison, their running back has over 140 yards already. How do you stop him going forward? We got to tackle him. Absolutely. Yeah. We got to do a good job of playing our assignments and, and get him to the ground. All right, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Scooter. Well, we saw a little bit of what this rivalry is, and the score is kind of telling, too, of how much these teams want this game, especially with the district championship on the line. So let's take you back to the scores that we've seen already. It was Odessa Permian coming out first with a couple of touchdowns, and Williams was the first to punch it in. Yeah, I think we're going to see much more of this in the second half. The Ed Williams and Josh Trailer show. And how about this to I Justin mean, Hammond? Permian's going to have to do this in, in the second half, especially if their their defense can't get a stop this first possession. I mean, they're going to have to put the ball in the air. And it seems like Lee had an answer. And once they got going, it was like a snowball going downhill. Yeah, Josh Trailer right here with a 63-yard touchdown run made it 14 to seven, and then Lee just kept it coming. This pass, an amazing grab by Sheldon Bass Jr., ties the game at 14-all. But Lee wasn't done on their big run. They hand it off to their man, Josh Trailer, once again. And on this play, he gets a touchdown and becomes the second all-time rushing leader at Lee. Ed Williams has an answer. And you can see these offensive linemen, the receivers on both teams, they're straining down the field. They're holding their blocks as long as they possibly can, just fighting for every inch. And that's what you get when Permian faces Lee. There's a lot of emotion involved in this game. And these guys, they don't want to leave here empty-handed. Josh Trailer punched it in one more time before the half to give Midland Lee a touchdown lead over Odessa Permian. And that's where our score stands as we get set to start the third quarter. But what a switch flip for this Lee team after trailing by 14. 
Yeah, it wasn't looking pretty for Lee after those first couple possessions. They're down 14-0. Their offense had really been stagnant. Their defense seemed to not have an answer for everything that Permian threw at them. And then it's like they're a completely different team once they settled in. And, and Coach Hartman even said we were a little bit nervous coming out. This is a big game. It's bright lights out here. They understand the magnitude of this game. And once they settled in, both offensively and defensively, and Lee has been on an absolute roll. And I'm sure after this long halftime, they want to find a way to continue that momentum moving forward. Yeah, they will get the ball first. Felix Hinojosa, their quarterback, had four carries for 20 yards. He was 7 of 9 for 154 yards through the air. Josh Trailer, 10 carries for 141 yards and a handful of scores. But if you're Lee, you are pumped up because you are ahead with 24 minutes to play. If Lee wins, they get a share, a three-way share of the district title. If Permian wins, they are the district champ. And not only would Lee get a share of districts, but they get to spoil it a little bit for Permian. Sure, Permian still has a share if they lose, but they want that thing outright. They don't want to have to share with two other teams. That will roll out of bounds. The penalty flag comes out. And a little extra help there for Lee to start their opening drive of the third quarter. It was fun to see Coach Hartman speaking with Scooter on his way off the field at halftime. He was excited. Yeah. He really was. And he said, we got, we got, yeah, Sherman Permian threw a few touchdown passes, but that's not what they want to do. They want to keep the ball on the ground and, and have that be their staple. And the changeup is when they put the ball in the air and try to catch you off guard. Big E.T. Big kick. This was a false start on the kicking team. They're going to re-kick this. You know who this is not fun for is the kickoff cover team, Courtney. Yeah. I've been a part of a few of these, especially like a punt. If a punt has to re-punt again, kickoff team. These guys just sprinted 50, 60 yards down the field. Sure, they're all in great shape. They run these up-tempo offenses. But it is not a whole lot of fun to have to repeat a kickoff. All right, so Mulligan on the start of the third quarter here. Let's see if Lee does a reverse or a fake reverse like they have on, on every their, other their one? previous <laughs> kickoff return. But this, I, I get why Lee would want him to re-kick. Now you're going to get a ball that you – most likely we'll go get to a chance to, to bring out. Hopefully count on some of these Permian guys maybe being a little bit winded for covering their second straight kickoff. So Carson Roberts has another go at it here for Permian. And that one stays in. Sheldon Bass Jr. takes it. And now Lee will set up their first drive almost at the 30. We saw a lot of different things that Felix Hinojosa, the quarterback for Midland League, can do in that first half. We saw him keep it a couple of times, smartly get down, avoid injury, but then also he aired it out, and they've handed it off a lot, obviously, to Josh Trailer. because why wouldn't you? And he has done a good job this year of taking care of the ball. He only has two interceptions compared to 15 touchdown passes coming into tonight. They like that decision-making from Hinojosa. And this is his first year as the starter. It's going to be a false start on Lee, so that'll back him up five yards. But Felix Hinojosa is replacing Colby Standard, who had an amazing career at Midland Lee. He holds the record for single season total yardage last year, over 3,800 yards. Hosa just swarmed for a loss by the Permian defense. Talking about talking about Hinojosa, guys. Coach told us he could have rushed for over 300 yards last game, but the coach pulled him. The coach describes him as a linebacker who can throw. And one of my favorite quotes is, 
the quarterbacks don't slide here. We saw him slide. <laughs> Maybe it gets Permian and they do slide. I don't know. Hinojosa has a few times tonight. You know, the best part about that, too, his brother is a linebacker, Michael. Yeah, the younger brother. Yeah, you heard Scooter mention his last game against Midland. They built a huge lead. They were up by 49 points in the first half, and they pulled him in the second quarter. Oh, ball came out. Nope, he was down. He was down. Got the first down. Move of the chains. And he slid. This is designed quarterback draw all the way here on third and 15. That's a good conservative call. And right there, when they're playing coverage, they're trying to drop eight on you. It worked out. Everyone cleared out, was playing deep zone. And Hosa takes it for the first down. The hole for Josh Trailer is large. Back to back first downs for Lee. Inside the 40, they go. Just washing the D-line of, of Permian down and giving Trailer that design cutback right there. I mean, we're seeing why he's had over 1,000 yards the last three seasons. And that's three different offensive lines, by the way. That'll be for a loss of two. What you got, Scooter? Guys, I have no idea what's going on. Scooter. Say it again. Get in that student section. Go up there. Get a That's why I don't want to get that on me. <laughs> what is that? Let's take you back. We're going to show it to you. We'll show you what happened over in the student section. I think it's baby powder. Yeah. Wow. I've been told it's pancake mix. Oh, <laughs> it that's is pancake even mix. better. Even better. Who doesn't love a good pancake? <laughs> and a host in trouble. On the move. Not in trouble anymore. He's got the first down. Still going. Steps out. Just past the 15. Another third and long conversion here from the Lee offense from Hinojosa's legs. And you can see the frustration on Permian on their defense. I mean, that's just, it kills you. It just, it breaks your back when it seems like he's so wide open. There's no one within five or six yards of him until he gets past the sticks. And when your back's turned and you're matching up, you're not going to see the quarterback run. Oh, they just do it again, didn't he? Josh Trailer Camping out in the end zone. is loving it. They just don't have an answer for Josh Trailer. Once again, blocking on the outside, blocking down the field from these receivers and running backs of Lee. It's just really making it almost too easy for Josh Trailer. He's already is such a skilled and patient back. When you have your receivers blocking 10, 15, 20 yards down the field like that and sticking to their defenders, it, it makes it easy for Trailer. Trailer has four touchdowns tonight. We're in the third quarter. Permian's going to have to find a way to make him bubble, make him go east and west and not north and south. Find a way to rally to the ball. Now down two touchdowns here. 8.56 left 
in the third quarter. Permian does not want to go down. They do not want to come out here and go three and out, turn the ball over, and go down 21 points. Then they'll really be playing on their heels. And that's what that's what Lee wanted to do coming out of half with the ball. If we go down and score a touchdown, it will really set us up in a good position to keep their offense in an uncomfortable spot, trying to come from behind. They've certainly got the confidence to go along with the score right now. Guess what, Courtney? Two of the biggest plays came from Hinojosa. His yes. Both third down conversions from Hinojosa. One was a design draw. The next one was just a, a scramble when they had everybody covered on the back end. And we're going to see one of those here on the Audi Zero Speed Tracker because we got to give the quarterback some love because he kept this drive going. Felix bounds. Hinojosa. Did I see a 16 on there? 17 on there. You know what's what's fun to see is I know I keep I'm like a broken record talking about these receivers blocking downfield for Lee, but if you saw on that play number seven, Fernando Hernandez, he was in, into a route. He saw that Hinojosa pulled it down and was running, and he immediately turned and became a blocker at the sticks and, and helped Hinojosa get that first down. So they just have a lot of awareness. You can tell the coaches pay attention to everything. And they don't take any, any even a second of the playoff. Fernando Hernandez has been an unsung hero tonight for Lee. He helped him save a fumble on that final drive in the first half. Scooped it up, situational awareness, making some blocks. Getting it done, and there's a quick first down on the first play for Permian. They're trying to answer with a little momentum of their own. Yeah, I would try to get Peyton Powell out on the, out on the perimeter. Roll him out a little bit, cut off the field, and give him one or two reads, and also he can pull it down if he needs to. That's how I would try to try to go attack and, and cut into this lead that Lee has built on you. Peyton Powell in the first half had four carries for 15 yards. He went six of eight through the air for 155 yards. By the way, in their last game, they only attempted eight passes, and he attempted eight passes in the first half of this one. It was what Coach Hartman for Lee told us. Hey, this is they're in an uncomfortable situation. They don't want to have to rely on the passing game. Flags come out. Little movement for Permian, maybe. No, oh, it's gonna be on Lee. Second and one now for Permian. Was it unsportsmanlike? I couldn't. I couldn't see the signal, and it got cut off a little bit. I don't know what the. I think Coach Hartman's trying to get an explanation here as well. I don't know. He doesn't seem satisfied, Courtney. <laughs> I like him. He's great. He's fired up always. Even on the conference call this week, he was fired up. He's fired up, and he's also he's positive at the same time too. Like he's not the he's not like a doom and gloom guy. You can tell his his players feed off of his energy. Yeah, it's, he's in his third season as the head coach at Midland Lee. This will be the second straight year they make the playoffs. Clinched that last week against Midland. Second and one for Permian. Justin Hammond fighting for his life, taken down for a monstrous loss by Charlie Gonzalez. And that was going to be a pass here. Justin Hammond was looking to throw the ball down the field. And Charlie Gonzalez, what a huge play. This guy is all over the place. 23 tackles for a loss this season coming into tonight and adds another one right there to his resume. What an athletic play, tackling in space, holding on to the ankle, man. Huge, huge play for Lee. We go from second and one to third and 12. Powell rolling out, desperation throw. Coral was in the vicinity, but not close. So that'll bring up fourth down with 7.17 to go in the third. You can't say enough about that play by Gonzalez. It was second and one, Courtney. They tried a little trickery with a reverse pass. Gonzalez, a tackle for a loss to put him in third and 12. And now they're punting again, giving the ball back to Lee. A little 
ends up staying with the Lee Rebels. I don't know who said anything after they were down 14 to nothing, but whoever did on this Smith and Lee sideline got everybody fired up. And they're fired up in the stands right now, too. You can feel it. Yeah, I think these these fans understand what's at stake, and they understand, hey, if we can drive the ball down, not only take time off this clock, if we can punch it in the end zone, or at worst, kick another field goal, make it a three-possession game, our chances of winning this game go way up. Permian came into this game undefeated in district play. Midland Lee came in 3-1. and one. They're not looking at the records tonight. They're looking at the scoreboard. A win tonight for the Midland Lee Rebels. They get a share of that district title. You can see Lee, the offense, taking their time, trying to use up some of this play clock. They're not going to let it all run out, but they're going to take their time and try to move the ball down the field. It's a low snap to Hinojosa, and he's in trouble. Thrown down with an exclamation point. And guess who? It's Matt Jones. Surprise, surprise. As we mentioned, he's going to Baylor. All right, third and 16 now. You're Permian. you got to keep your eyes on Hinojosa. Do not let him beat you again on a third and long with his legs. Quick pitch forward. Flag comes out. Holding. They'll decline this and it'll bring up fourth down. Number 71. Bethy's declined. So that's what happens. And now Lee has to punt. So Matt Jones, that takedown becomes even bigger right there after the penalty. They force Lee to punt. It's giant. You force him to punt, and, and not only that, you're, you're going to get yourself some good field position. Chase Stell is back. Takes a knee at the 46 of Permian, and that's where they will set up their drive. Matt Jones almost blocked that punt right there too, Courtney. Mentioned him getting in on a tackle on kickoff cover team earlier. Almost blocked a punt here. And get that man a rest. Let him sit down on the bench for a couple minutes here. Hope that this Permian offense can sustain a drive. Permian setting up shop on the 46-yard line, their own 46. First and 10, they have not scored in the second half. Ed Williams is the man, falls forward for a yard. Williams on the carry. Charlie Gonzalez in on another tackle. He's been all over the place, especially this second half and late in that first half. And we got him working as an inside linebacker, and he's played defensive end a lot throughout his career, too. Oh, wide open Horrell. Caden Horrell over the middle. He goes inside the 10. He goes. Make like a little, run a little bubble screen here. And Horro just sliding on the inside right up the seam. Trying to take this thing all the way for six. Can't quite get there. Carl Taylor catches him, but sets his team up with deep into the red zone, going in for a score. The score would be really big right here for Permian. Ed Williams gets a couple. Mm -hmm. 
Permian needs a touchdown here. They're down a couple of scores already. Have not punched it in since the first half. Now we're approaching the four-minute mark here in the third quarter. Considering how they started this game, it didn't look like they could be stopped. Let's see if they can get a little spark here by punching it in. Powell looking to his left. Incomplete. He was looking for Justin Hammond. Guys, Coach Hartman didn't like that formation. He tried to get a timeout, but he couldn't get it in time. Fortunately, it was an incomplete pass with your lead. And he's glad now that he didn't get that timeout. Yeah, save it. Third and goal for Permian. On the run. Throw is low and in the dirt. Fourth down. So here comes Carson Roberts on for the field goal. Yeah, and this goes to show that Permian doesn't want to have to rely on the passing game to beat you. Third and seven, they felt like they were a little too far out to, to try to run that one in. And they just haven't really been able to get into much of a rhythm offensively when it, when it comes to the pass game. The lead defenders have seemed to be all over these receivers. 21-yard field goal is up and good for Permian. So not the outcome that they wanted, but they do put some points on the board. It's definitely better than nothing, but it does feel like a missed opportunity for this Permian offense not being able to punch it in there for the touchdown. And the lead defense really stood up. Once again, the red zone, they tightened up. That's a win for them, keeping them out of the end zone, making them settle for a field goal. Still up 35-24 to 24 deep into the third quarter. Well, Clint Hartman, we were talking to him about his defense. Of course, he's the coach at Lee. He was really proud of what his defense has done. He says this defensive line, the biggest, most athletic he's ever had in his career. And really, his defense as a whole has been making noise after giving up the 14 points to start the game. They have. They've, they've really kept Peyton Powell kind of throwing off of his back foot, kept him uncomfortable. That, and that's the number one goal you'll hear defenses talk about. We want to stop the run first. The old cliche, Courtney. Yep. Everyone knows we want to stop the run. We want to make the quarterback feel uncomfortable. And Peyton Powell has absolutely been uncomfortable in the passing game tonight. He just can't ever set his feet and throw. There's always one or two defenders harassing him. And that's not what this offense is set up to do. They don't want to set and throw. They're trying to run the triple option, use all those different looks and run the ball. But Lee has been able to slow that down. Yeah. And they want to be in a close game. They want to be slightly ahead or only down one score. And being down two scores does not play into their favor. Carl Taylor fields it for Midland Lee. Touchback. Okay. Now if you're Lee, what do you do? You, It's tough. Playing with the lead is, is not the easiest thing to do. I think if you watch any game, any NFL games on Sunday, you can see a team jump out. Maybe they'll be 21 points ahead. And it just seems so difficult to hold on to a lead because as an offensive play caller, you need to stay aggressive and do what got you there, what got you that lead. In the same time, not give it away, not make any big mistakes or turnovers by making risky throws over the middle or down the field that aren't open. It's a fine balance. Both teams are taking care of the ball tonight. We don't think we've, we haven't had any turnovers, have we? I don't think so. Not change of possession. We've had a few hit the ball on the ground, but. Yeah. And that's a sign of teams that are coached very well. They do they, they, the fundamentals. They take care of. They yeah, take care of the football. They don't. They don't beat themselves. Second and seven for Lee. Felix Hinojosa limping a little okay. bit for Midland Lee. What you got, Scooter? Right. Nothing. I was just going to say that right there. Hinojosa's for the past couple of plays has been walking with a, a big limp. 
I don't even know if he's going to be able to finish this game at this pace the way that he's limping right now. Well, he's still out there right now. So you're saying he may not pull this one down third and short. Maybe he can limp his way to three yards for the first down. He's he's killed him on third downs with his legs earlier. Yeah, that may play a factor the rest of this game. They hand it off to Trailer. Gets the first down. Yeah, Hinojosa is definitely limping pretty badly on Trailer, what it looks okay. like it may be an ankle. Okay. Not only does that affect you in the, the run game, of course, you're trying to plant your feet and throw. Ball on the a bad ankle. I don't know if it's his right or his left yet. If it's his plant foot, it can't feel good. And how many times, especially on that last drive, did he get them out of a bad situation using his legs? We've seen that several times tonight. They give it to Josh Trailer again. Picks up about five. And there's a flag coming out. AJ, got a question for you. What's up, Scoot? If you're the Permian defense and you see their your opponent's quarterback limping, what do you do now? You try to rip his ankle off, Scooter. No, okay. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing against AJ ever? Wow. No, but you know what has happened? I've actually got a, a guy's shoe off before. I tackled him like Gator Road, got his shoe off, and then I fired it to the, our bench, to our sidelines, because then I knew you got to take that kid out. And guess what? He and his offensive linemen were not very happy. And it just seemed like a natural <laughs> reaction to throw the, the cleat. But sure, no, get it off the field. It's yeah, debris. It's, yeah, the, the refs want to keep the game moving. But no, you, they definitely, I mean, you can't like target it or anything, but you... You should hope as a Permian defense that he can't beat you with his, his legs like he has done this whole third quarter, it seems like. He's getting it out really quick, whether it's handing it off or that quick throw right there to get back maybe well, a little short of the, the original line of scrimmage. Second and 11. Up to the 34-yard line. He's fighting through it. He's carrying out his run fakes and everything. You can tell he's battling. Maybe they can get him to the... After this drive, they get him on the sidelines. Maybe if it is an ankle, spat it up, tape on, tape over top of that shoe, maybe yeah. give him a little bit of stability. He's going to throw it. Ooh, Sheldon Bass Jr. was close to closing in on that, and there's a flag down inside the 30. called on the holding penalty for Midland. It's two holding penalties on this drive for Lee. Setting up a second and 19. Not ideal. Not ideal. Obviously, they like to get a, a chunk of this back so you're not facing third and long. Try to make it third and medium, third and manageable. Hinojosa's going to root Run. Even with the limp, he's running, and the flag comes out. Another hold. Hit a hose on the ground. So it's second and 31. Josh Trailer picks up maybe five yards. Even though that Hinojosa, that last run was pulled back due to holding, it still at least gives the threat that he can run with that injured ankle or lower body, whatever he has going on. Although he looks like he's limping even harder now. Permian can't just write him off and say he's not a threat. He's not going to keep it anymore. He obviously can. He's trying to fight through it. Third and 25. Did Lee call a timeout? I didn't see where the flag came out. clock issue, I think. There's 34 seconds on the clock. 
third and 25, Courtney. What do you think they have up their sleeve here? Your lead. Oh, wolf. They go to trailer. Maybe he can do it. He's going to be short. Doesn't does get back to the original line of scrimmage, which is the 35, by the way. 26 seconds on the clock now as he gets out of bounds. At the end of that play, I felt like everybody in the stadium was just turning around, starting to walk back and just assume there's going to be another holding call. Like we've yeah. seen, like we've had <laughs> that whole drive. And it's like they got called for holding every single play. Fourth down, and Midland Lee will punt. Very short. And Lee touches it at the 50. 16 seconds left here in the third quarter. Odessa Permian and Midland Lee battling for a district championship. Midland Lee, if they can hang on, they get a share of the district title. If Odessa Permian can come back and win this game, they are the district champs. Both of these teams are going to the playoffs, though. What a way to end the regular season here. This has been a good one. Permian pitches it out to Justin Hammond. Rolls forward a yard short of the first down. Oh, he might have gotten it. He did move those chains. Justin Hammond is their guy. When they they toss sweep right there, he seems to be the guy that is in motion and takes that toss sweep. He's just so fast. He can get the edge so quickly. You don't have to hold blocks for as long because he's already by you. They toss it out again. This time, though, it goes to Ed Williams on the pitch. And that should do it for the third quarter. Three quarters in the books in our season finale of Friday Night Stripes presented by Adidas. Midland Lee on top of Permian, 35-24. to 24. Stepping out the wagon, it's 200,000. Bright red paint, got it looking like a dragon. That's what you get from a hard dead trap. And I'm big, 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 minutes off, just flashing. Ready? Turn everything up. Fourth quarter just moments away here in Midland, Texas. Courtney Lyle, A.J. Hawk, Scooter Magruder with you. Our final quarter of Friday Night Stripes. Midland Lee on top of Permian, but Permian driving inside the 40 of Midland Lee. Peyton Powell pulls it. Falls forward. That'll bring a third down. Permian team, a triple option team, but they've been limited running that tonight because Midland Lee's defense had other ideas. They've really forced Permian to air it out a little bit more than they would like. The pitch to Justin Hammond. First down. Flag out. Late hit coming in there by Lee. Hammond on the carry. Yeah, it looked like They hit Hammond a good yard or two out of bounds here. Watch at the end of the play. Oh, yeah. Mm. That was Romeo Martinez. Coming in on that hit late. Personal foul. Made it out of bounds. 54 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Yeah. No, but they call it on the offense. On John Hinojos. Number 54 Let's in see white. If we can find out where it is here. He's right here yeah, he's in, right the middle, in the middle of your screen. About the 30 yard line. 
because obviously it looked like Romeo Martinez was the late hit, but maybe Hinojos came in even after. Mm. Yeah. Oh, they saw him with the push. I'm surprised that's not offsetting, but I think Hinojos, his hit was much more violent. I think that's a big reason why they may have seen that. He hit him up higher. That was a good shot that he laid. I didn't see where the official was positioned, too. He may not have. had to miss that. I mean, yeah. it, it, regardless, they... Peyton Powell eludes the rush, throws a strike to Ed Williams, and Williams just can't bring that one in. It's pretty good composure for Powell to get that pass off. He hit it. He hit Williams with it. Flags everywhere. Oh! Tyler Ramage. Now the penalty was on the defense. Obviously, you're going to decline that. My goodness. That's a, that's the definition of a free play right there. Peyton Powell has the heads up. He knows it's a free play, so he'll take a chance that he may not take without that. And Ramage comes down with a huge touchdown catch here. Credit to the refs for actually not calling that play dead. Now, the lead... Fans and players would say, no, absolutely not. That should have been yeah. called dead. Bruce Franco thought he was going to have an interception there for Lee. And Permian calls timeout. They're going for two here. First team timeout. First team timeout. Well, we thought we would end things in Texas on Friday Night Stripes because everything's a little bit bigger and better here. So this rivalry is definitely one of those things. Playing in Texas is just something different. I couldn't imagine playing anywhere else. Everywhere you go, all you hear about is Friday Night Lights. Kids just, just buy in. Being in Texas, I mean, it just makes it even better because no other state you can fill 30,000 people in for a high school game. To have so much hype around high school football and, and in West Texas, it's, it's just like Friday Night Lights, it means a lot more. Just the atmosphere around West Texas football is just is different. It certainly is, and we got a five point game right here. Permian trying to tack on two more after that touchdown by Tyler Ramage. Coming out of the pistol, they got Ed Williams back there. Coral in motion. And Peyton Powell held on to it. He is short. Ruby Martinez coming from the backside. A huge tackle here. Peyton Powell just trying to follow Ed Williams into the end zone here, like using him as a lead blocker. And a giant play to stay up five points. Look at the reaction. Yes! From Clint Hartman. Love it. <laughs> they feel it. They even said hey, they, they set the standards high here at Lee. They expect a lot out of these players. You know, I read a story about Clint Hartman, the coach for Lee. He said back in 1993, somebody brought him to this game, a Permian Lee game. And he knew right then he wanted somehow to be a part of this rivalry. And here he is in his third season as Midland Lee's head coach. Guys, one thing to look at going forward is that Coach Hartman said about Permian that the team's very right-handed. So look for them to attack the right side in situations like that going forward. Point ball game in the fourth quarter. This is the kind of game we've been waiting for all season. It's turning into a good one. Cordy, each team has answered. 
to slugfest back and forth. That's what we were expecting, and we are getting treated to a nice game. Midland Lee takes it past the 35. That was Bruce Franco on the return. And now they'll try to add to their five-point lead. Looking for a share of that district title. They haven't beaten Permian in the last five meetings. Last year, they only put up seven points on the board against Odessa Permian. They got a few more tonight. And off to Josh Trailer. He slung down for a loss. It's Christian Schauner. Schauner, the, the senior cornerback who's been starting since his sophomore year. Had an interception last week, got a TFL right there. Takes back two yards from Lee. This Permian defense, they want a turnover. Hanahosa is still in there. Remember, he was limping on their last drive. Running out of time. No catch. Hanahosa trying to roll out to his left. Fighting through what looks like to be an ankle injury, trying to square his shoulders and throw the ball there. It's just tough to get anything on it, I think, when you're hobbling around, can't really get your shoulders square, and it's tough to have anything on it. Shawner is there on the receiver to break that thing up. Third and 12. Hinojosa running out of time again. Uh oh. Hello, Matt Jones. Whoa. Matt Jones, just relentless effort at all times. Bull rushing the tackle all the way back. Forces Hinojosa out of the pocket and watch him slam him down at the end. He'd probably get thrown out of three NFL games for yep. that one. <laughs> it's a great that job That is rough Matt in the Jones. Past. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> It may sit him down for a year in the NFL for that. Yeah. So Midland Lee has to punt. Permian is going to get great field position. They will start on their own 45-yard line. So 9.28 to go in this one. Permian is down by five points. They're trying to get the district title outright. And they were close to do it. They were close to getting a little bit closer. Remember, they went for two and was were not able to punch it in. Yeah, I mean, it sounds a lot better to be the outright champs than to share with two other people. Right. And they know that they're taking a lot of pride in. It. Hey, this has been a slugfest back and forth, and they're trying to answer and go ahead for the first time in a long time. Peyton Powell pulls it. He's got the first down across midfield. He goes. First and ten from the 44. Approaching the nine minute mark remaining. And Williams powers forward. Just got tripped up in the pile of offensive defensive linemen there in the middle. Looked like he had some opportunity. If he was able to get his legs up on that one, he could have got a first down for sure. Powell to the air. with it in the air. Caden Poro got behind the defense. This ball is just a little bit behind him. You see he has to adjust. It's like a back shoulder, but even tougher because you're, all of your momentum is going the other way. You almost have to stop and turn. And he just can't bring it in. It does touch the tip of his fingertips. 
Would have been a spectacular catch. Third and seven. Powell's got it tripped up. Well, Wasn't anything he, there. I think he just tripped. Fourth down now for Permian. Got to watch out for that turf monster. It creeps up sometimes. Sometimes this turf can get a little bit wet. It gets cold like this. Mm. He had it. The Midland League crowd getting on its feet. Fourth down. Permian says they want to go for it. Fourth and three. This lead defense. Wow. I like the play call by Permian. Giving him options. But Lee has it covered on all ends of this. What a play there. I believe that was number 26, Brian Hicks. This lead defense shifted into another gear in the first quarter. And they haven't let up. They had everything covered there. If you see that, the little fake toss, reverse pivot out. They had every level covered. It's going to be a false start. Luke Fungi was about 10 yards downfield. <laughs> I get it. Get excited. 7.44 sure. left. You're winning the game. Your rival. Your rival. Just want to get out there. We're going to make a play. First and 15. Josh Trailer is the man they call on. Trying to get back the other way. Pick up a three. That sealed the game. AJ, another question for you. What's going on? If they get a touchdown right here, will that seal the game for Lee? You think that puts it away? It's not over, but no. it definitely helps a lot. Still over seven minutes left. Pass out. Short of the first down. Lee has three timeouts, too. Permian has two left, so it wouldn't seal the game, but it would uh, it would give them some breathing room and make those uh, those coaches on the sidelines feel a lot better. Even Even three. Getting a field goal here out of this drive, going up eight would make them feel a lot better because now if you, you turn the ball over and you're only up five, that's not a fun position to be in on defense when you know a touchdown beats you. Keep in mind, too, we've seen both of these teams score very quickly on quick drives. They've shown they can do it. Incomplete pass. Yeah, that's the thing. They're not really built to play from behind. No. They're not built to score quickly, but they can, and they've shown the ability to do that, and that's – the schemes that they run usually are not quick hitter schemes, but they have such great talent in the athletes that they can make those plays and break any, at any time. They can break a long run or they can beat you over the top in the passing game. Under seven minutes to go. Lee can't add to their lead, so here comes the punt team on fourth down. Chase Stell back once again for Permian. Hunt drops inside the 35. They'll spot it at the 34. This is where it gets fun. It's 6 <laughs> 47 to go, a five point ball game. Keep in mind, you can't tell from the players out there, it's cold. It's in the 30s, by the way. Somewhat windy. It's not as windy as we thought it was going to be, but yeah. it definitely has an impact on the ball. Pass goes through the hands of Tyler Ramage. Bruce Franco there to lay the wood, even if that was hauled in by Ramage. It would only have been about a three-yard gain. Ball just floated a little bit on Peyton Powell. You can see Ramage has his head turned already. You know you got to go up and you expose those ribs. You're going to take a shot for sure. Second 
Second and 10 now for Permian. Powell rolling out. He's got Justin Hammond. Short of the first down, but they still got some room to work. That'll bring up third down. That's all they want. Permian just needs positive plays. Great third and shorts. If you're going to get to third down, make it third and five or less. Don't play behind the sticks and be putting yourself in a lot of these third and 10, third and 12 situations. It's third and three now. They pitch it. Justin Hammond gets the call again. He's going to be real close to that first down. He might, he, yeah. Yep, he gets it. They gave it to him. And Justin Hammond again on that toss sweep as they have used three or four times in this second half. In every game, they, they come back to this at some point. I mean, heck, we even saw him toss it to Justin Hammond one time and he was looking to throw it. So Lee has to honor and respect that. It didn't work out for Permians. I don't know if they'll come back to it. but So they just moved the chains back. Hmm. Are they going to measure? I thought they were going to bring it out and measure from the beginning. But then the one referee in the far sideline was waving him forward. Right. This gentleman right here. He just said, I told him to move him. They needed to get to the 44-yard line here. It's hard to tell where he stepped out. Yeah, where is the ball when he stepped out? If he would have put the ball, pushed the ball forward a little bit in front of his body, I think he could have gotten maybe an, an extra half of a yard there. So they're bringing the chains out to mid to the field. This is what I thought they were going to do from the, the beginning of, right. of this play was measured. It seemed like it was no question that you're going to measure. I haven't seen them bring them all the way over to the other sideline before, though. <laughs> Putting the chain gang to work. Looks like it's short. About so six, six chain links, Courtney. Yep. They'll make sure they place the ball at the exact spot. I was off. Maybe about eight chain links there. You need to adjust your chain link math. I know. That's my fault. I apologize. <laughs> Fourth and a few chain links. Powell on the keeper. Yeah, I got it. He got it. With the spot that they're showing at the bottom of the screen there from that official, it looks like they definitely got it. Yeah, they moved the chains already. They're on it this time. It looked like they had him stopped possibly before. He fought for this. Oh, he's on top of the defender yeah, right so he's there. Not yes, down. exactly. What a heady play. Ooh, it's scary. He sticks the ball forward. He had to do Ooh, it. Yeah. He fell on top of the defender and rolled him. What a play by Powell to get that fourth down conversion. And then picks up a first down on the next play. Permian is across midfield and moving. Six minutes and counting. See right there, that, that fake to Ed Williams. Williams, if he doesn't get the ball, he turns into a lead blocker for Powell. So that's why it's, it's really difficult to stop this when they're really executing every single aspect of this triple option. Ball's on the 43. Spin from Powell. Airs it out. Receiver has to come back and get it, and he certainly does. Mason Sellers all over it. Four Three-yard touchdown. Pal 
Kyle reverse pivots out and has his eyes downfield locked in on Mason Sellers all the way. And that right there, when you're a defender and the ball is thrown behind the receiver, no matter how good your coverage is, it's tough to come back because the receiver has his eyes on the ball. He knows where it's at. You're reacting off of him. All right, they're going for two here. Powell's pass is batted down. Isaiah Harvey said no way, and it's still a one-point lead for Permian. They've tried to go for two twice and haven't been able to convert. I guess that this is what we all expected, huh, Courtney? Permian up. I love this. 36, this is great. With 524 to go. This game has been a roller coaster. This touchdown is awesome. Peyton Powell to Mason Sellers. With pressure in his face. Sellers with the awareness to come back for it, not just continue to run when the ball was underthrown. You knew once he, he came back to catch that ball, he was not going to be denied. He was going to get in the end zone. Let's put an Audi Zero speed tracker on that. Peyton Powell had time to throw that, too. You saw how he, he, he pressed the stem of Brian Hicks, number 26, the corner there. He pressed him inside, got Hicks to kind of jump inside leverage, and then just kind of head nodding him back to the outside to where he already beat him with his leverage. And if Peyton Powell would have thrown that ball out in front, I think he would have had him by a yard or two, but he threw, threw it behind and worked out. It turned out almost into like a, a back shoulder throw that's designed that we see happen all the time on Sundays. First is Roberts with the high boot. And Bruce Franco takes it to the 40. All right, so Midland Lee's got 518 to work with. They're down by a point. And Franco coming up, holding one of his shoulders after that return. Goes Midland Lee, Logan Acosta picks up five. Acosta with the ball. On the reverse here, and Acosta picks up a block. Keaton Armstrong, the senior safety, was moved from outside backer to safety this year. Comes up and makes sure it's not an explosive game. Josh Trailer needs five for the first down. He's got that, and then five more. First down, Midland Lee. Trailer on the Trailer on the top. Brings it back okay. all the way when he feels 99. Deshaun Wright crash all the way down. Brings it out the backside. Hanahosa looking downfield. Has to run and gets out of bounds. Limping. Yeah, that's a, that's common. If you have an ankle injury, you can't stop. Stopping and starting is so tough, especially on this field turf when you're wearing cleats and your cleats really dig in and they stick hard. It's his right leg. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to speculate and say it's 100% an ankle. It looks like it is. Mm. Looks like he can't put a whole lot of weight on there. I'm guessing he doesn't want to change direction either. He's fighting through it, though. I love it. Quick pass out to the flat to Fernando Hernandez. Clock still rolling. Third down. Got all kind of guys limping over here for Lee. Fernando Hernandez now is limping off the field. Devils, 
Under four minutes to play in a one-point ball game, a district title on the line here in Midland, Texas. Flag coming out. Intercepted. It is picked off by Permian. That's Tanner Adams. But there was a flag right when the ball was snapped. Flag on play. I think the defense jumped. Offside. Yeah. Defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So that saves Felix Hinojosa from an interception and brings up third down. Top of your screen there. Sean Wright, I guess, was lined up in the neutral zone or offsides there. Man, just a killer for Permian. They thought they had the, the turnover with a, the beautiful return from Tanner Adams. First and 10 from the 33 now for Midland Lee. They're down by one. They've trailed by as many as 14 in this game after scoring 20, and then they scored 21 unanswered. I love the fight we're seeing from Felix Hinojosa, though, dealing with that leg injury, that right leg injury, and still pushing forward. And it shows how much his coaches trust him, too. That's a design quarterback run right there, too, Courtney. It's like a QB counter play almost. He's definitely a warrior. Gosh, trailer picks up a yard. Third and five. How do they feel about uh, kicking a field goal here? The field goal range, what do you think? You don't want to have to leave it to that. Yeah. If you are Lee, but they can't convert and get this first down here. The wind doesn't look too bad right now. He's can swirl a bit down there. Trailer looking for the edge. He's going to be a, a yard short maybe of the first down. It's hard to tell. They're marketed on the near sideline, and it's blocked by Midland Lee players. We're going to bring it out and measure again. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah, I think Lee may use a timeout here to figure out what they want. On fourth down, the ball is at the 24-yard line. It's a one-point game with 2.19 to play. This is everything we thought the season finale of Friday Night Stripes was going to be in Midland, Texas, with this huge rivalry game, a district championship on the line. Midland Lee, if they can pull this out, they would get a share of the district title. Permian already has a share of it, but they want the outright title, and they're up by a point. Absolutely, and it's decision time right now. Like, what do you do? If you're leading, you try to can you trust your field goal kicker enough? 219 left in this game. Ball's on the 24 yard line. A little bit of swirling wind. I mean, we are in West Texas. Yep. There's always some kind of wind affecting the game. Or do you trust that your offense can pick up what looks to be a half of a yard, maybe? He sends his offense out there. They're going for it. And one. Josh Trailer, he got it. That's having some faith in your offensive line and your back. Yeah, it really is. And Josh Trailer, I, I get why they do have faith in him. 
he does seem to kind of always be the type of running back that falls forward. Always, his legs are always moving. You don't want to have to leave it up to your field goal kicker there. They give it to him again. Forward progress is stopped. They'll blow it dead. Clock still ticking. Under two minutes to go in this one. Second and seven coming up for Midland Lee. Now what do you do if you're lead? Do you put the ball in the air and risk a turnover that will essentially end it? You try to keep it on the ground and see if you can punch it in for the score. And off goes to Trailer again. Permian's all over it. Flags out. And Lee loves it. Getting a little chippy. These refs have been busy this second half. On play. Unsportsmanlike like conduct number one, Ben and Lee. Unsportsmanlike like conduct number five, Permian. Those fouls all set. Third down. Huh? All right, so it moves to third down. I don't know if they got those numbers right. Courtney. Yeah. Chase still right there with the face mask. That's what it looked like the Permian flag was on at least. Sheldon Bass Jr. Touchdown. Midland Lee. Back on top. Sheldon Bass Jr. with just a simple slant route. Getting inside the defender there, number five, Christian Shawner. And he wins that battle and finds a way to get into the end zone. Huge throw as well by Hinojosa. But did you leave too much time for this Permian offense? A minute seven on the clock. With two timeouts. Clock stops after first downs. They're definitely going to get a chance to try to drive down and score. Can't take any negative yardage plays. They need to find a way to block up this lead front that's been wreaking havoc in Permian's backfield all night. What a play. What a just a, a drive by this Midland Lee offense. you got to be kidding me. Every single time that they've been challenged, they have responded. This game has been a dogfight back and forth. We said earlier, it might be whoever has the ball last wins this game. Midland Lee. You know, Hosa with the absolute strike right there. That's not an easy ball to throw either, especially when you're. You've been limping through the majority of this second half. I mean, Hinojosa and that whole drive was just amazing. It's like these guys got ice in their veins. And he's hurt. He is very <laughs> He's going to feel it tomorrow. He feels it right now. Their defense still has to close out this game, and they've played pretty well tonight. 
They really have. Let's see if they can. Uh, I mean, Permian doesn't want to take any big sacks to get behind the sticks. You don't want to take any negative yardage plays. And this lead defense has a tendency to make some big tackles for losses in opportune times. Midland Lee was down 14 to nothing. They scored 21 unanswered points. Led 28-21 at the half. And now have come back to jump on top again, 43-36. I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, Courtney, but let's just say Permian drives down and they score. Do they go for two for the win? Go big or go home. Yeah. Dana Holgerson. They've gone for two go twice for and have not been able to convert. Third time's a charm, right? Yeah. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're not there yet. Pump the brakes I don't really want that. to. I kind of want them to go to overtime and extend this thing. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take as much as we can get. Let's see what Peyton Powell and Permian can do with a minute seven on the clock. Down a touchdown. To the air they go. Wide open receiver through the hands. Oh, Justin Hammond had open field in front of him. You can see this thing developing early. Hammond with a little out and up, and he was wide open. Mm. The ball is a little bit, not really, I can't oh, say it's even nice. in front of him. He just kind of <laughs> short-armed that one. Under a minute to go. Powell in trouble. Tripped up. And there's a lead player down. Ed Williams got almost like a, a crack block trying to keep Peyton Powell upright here. It's Tracy Mackey who's slow to get up on the play for Midland Lee. Shoe came off too. Yeah, he took a shot, no question. That was a big negative yardage play. I said that this Permian offense could not give up. You got a feel for Hammond there. I mean, coach is kind of consoling him, patting him on the head, saying, hey, it's all right. It, it will all be forgotten. That, that drop will be forgotten. If you can find a way to make a play for this offense, you've made so many of them already tonight. Just try to make one more, but it's tough to, to erase that one. It was most likely an easy six for him. here for Permian. Powell lets it fly. Almost picked off incomplete fourth down. Courtney, that was the same play they ran that Hammond dropped earlier. Obviously, the lead defense was all over it. And yeah, Bruce Franco was right there. Fourth and 23. It's going to get loud. District title up for grabs. It's on these these front four, the five, if they bring a linebacker. Don't let Peyton Powell step into his throw. It's most likely going to be not a Hail Mary. Fourth and 23. He has the arm to, to get, it, get it there, but don't let him run around all day. A lot of times you see in these Hail Mary type situations, quarterback will scramble, scramble, and then he can almost crow hop into it and, and get the ball down the field. I always like to bring out, have like almost like a spy linebacker to where the, when the quarterback breaks the pocket, you don't let him step into his throw and get it all the way down the field. So Permian has used their final timeout. 43 seconds to go. Down seven. On their own 12, it's going to be 4th and 23. Where do they go here?
Aiden Powell down the middle of the field in traffic overthrows his receiver. Turnover on downs. Midland Lee is going to hang on to this one. They haven't beaten Permian in the last five meetings. That's about to change in 37 seconds. You can see Lee head coach Quint, Quint Hartman chest bumping players coming off the field. His, his defensive players have really stood up when they needed him most tonight. They're making announcements that the fans aren't allowed to rush the field. This place is prime and ready for a Lee victory. <laughs> Jeez, oh, gosh. The snap here. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Portman had to have a mild heart attack on that one. Midland Lee is going to pick up a three-way share of the district title with the win here tonight. What a way to enter the playoffs. Both of these teams will be playing in the postseason, but Midland Lee earning a share of the district title tonight with a 43-36 win over their rival, Odessa Permian. They were down 14 to nothing to start this game. Man, what a what a slugfest back and forth between two. Very, very good football teams down here in Texas. I was very impressed by both teams. I mean, it came down to the wire, and whichever team made one more play, and Midland Lee was able to do that tonight. Our Adidas Alpha player of the game, it's going to a quarterback, Felix Hinojosa, playing with an injury to his right leg. Throwing the game-winning touchdown pass, extending drives with his legs. He did a little bit of everything. Yeah, not only throwing that dime right there for the go-ahead score, but also the two-point conversion. Another precise throw on the next play to put him up seven points there. Just a gutty, gutty, gutsy performance by Hinojosa. Man, at one point we thought he wasn't going to be able to finish the game. This guy's a true warrior. He is our Adidas Alpha player of the game. The senior quarterback, Felix Hinojosa, his first year as the starter, worked hard to earn that job, and here he is closing out the regular season, helping his team take down Odessa Permian for the first time in five meetings with a 43-36 to win. How, hold on. He, hold on, we got to do the interview now because we're about to. So Scooter's trying to wrangle Felix Hinojosa for us. All right, let's get it down to Scooter, who's on the field with our Adidas Alpha player of the game. That's right, Courtney. I am here with Felix Hinojosa. Felix, you're hobbled. You're wobbling. You throw the game-winning touchdown against your biggest rivals to claim the district championship, a share of it. How are you feeling right now? It's it's unbelievable to the feeling that I'm feeling right now. You know, we this is what we work for. This is why when the when the regular season and postseason is over we go straight to work we don't waste any time and and this is what we live for we live for these moments to you know we're working hard the off season is showing for this program you know coach hartman him and his staff they put in a lot of hours you know they are always getting us to be where we need to be to be the best football team around here and get get stuff done like we did tonight you're heading to the playoffs now how far can this team go this team can make it all the way. I, I truly believe that 100%. Uh, this team puts in a lot of work, a lot of a lot of effort, and stuff that other teams will never be doing. And that's what's making this program shine now. What do you want to say to everyone watching live on Twitter right now? Uh, thank you for supporting the Rebels. If you're supporting us, you know, 
This is uh, the fan base is getting crazy. You know, this is what we want. Meet us in the playoffs and go, come with us and let's go to state. That's all I got to say. All right, congratulations, Hinojosa. Go celebrate with your with your teammates. What a Back night. to you guys. What a night for him. 11 carries for 50 yards. He was 14 of 19 for 197 yards through the air. And that huge game-winning touchdown, all with a bummed right leg. Yeah, when they needed it most, he stood <laughs> up. He, uh, Like we said, we, we didn't think he there was a chance he wasn't going to finish that game. He's, he's hobbling all yeah. over the place. Not only does he keep the ball and run when we didn't, we thought, okay, now he's just going to be a, a pure pocket passer. No, he kept the ball and was hobbling through it, fought through it, to throw two perfect passes, that the game-winning touchdown, and then a two-point conversion to put him up seven to give him a little bit of comfort there. Just a, a huge performance by Hinojosa. How about this lead defense, too, though? Because Odessa Permian, they run that triple option. Not an easy thing to prepare for, and they came up with some big stops to help their offense go back to work. Yeah, it's very difficult to stop, too. When they have athletes everywhere you look, on the outside of the receiver, all their running backs, their halfbacks, their quarterback is going to Texas. Yeah. As an athlete, he can play multiple positions, so... The lead defense stood up tonight time and time again, and that's a huge reason why they won this game. How about this for our season finale of Friday Night Stripes? It was a pretty good one. There's a reason we ended things in Midland, Texas. A close one, a district champ crowned here tonight. It's been a lot of fun on the first season of Friday Night Stripes been great yeah thanks Courtney it's been fun yeah we'll be we'll hopefully be back next season to bring you the best high school games across the country thanks to Adidas thanks to Intersport thanks to all of our hard-working crew our producer John Graff all the people behind the scenes that you don't see who put in so much work to make this happen it has been a fun season under the Friday Night Lights on Friday Night Stripes